All right. So I think we're live. Hello, everybody, or nobody right now, but, but hello, people who are watching this in the future, and this is the first bit that they're seeing. Um, very excited today. We got a lot of guests, as you can see. And uh, as always, we got the Leandro Facchinetti in the house, who's right here. Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. Thanks, Thanks for having, having you here. Oh, that's right there. And we also have our special guest, Garant Luff, on the top left corner. If I'm pointing to the right things. And uh, we're very excited to have him. Um, in case anybody doesn't know who Garant is, um, Garant, do you want to introduce yourself briefly in case somebody doesn't know who you are? Oh, right. Yeah, oh, right. right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, should have thought about that. Should have thought about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Darren, I, Darren, Darren I, 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 you might see, I, you might see, might see on the, the Reaper forums, 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 um, um, a, a, a set of JS effects, um, effects um, which, 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 I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, quite, um, um, and at the moment, at the moment, I think I'm adding up a Sigma Smith audio, audio, French team, French team, plus, 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 development, development, and turning that into a, into a, Business and business, business and thing, which is thing, which really is fun, really fun. Um, um, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's good to be here. Good to good be, to here. be here. Yeah, yeah. That's great. It's great to have you. Um, I read that you were already kind of bored of doing like piano scales at the age of eight, <laughs> and you got your parents got you uh, your first composing software. So I was just curious. Well, what that software was, first of all, and uh, well, yeah, that's the first question, I guess. What was your first software that you dove into composing with? Oh, I wish oh, I, I like, 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 just to my house, just to my house, it. it's, um, it's, it's, um, um, it's Pinkwalk Pink 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 Studio, Studio yeah, yeah. Uh, for uh, Windows 3.1. And, and it came on floppy disks. It just did a video thing. Maybe there was audio, but I didn't have to work like that. Yeah, so it was just... Playing, playing with MIDI stuff, stuff and, and sending, sending it, it to Bill's sound, sound card, and, and uh, I wrote some terrible, terrible, terrible music, music, which I've, I've, I've lost, lost. <laughs> and I can't tell if it's good or bad thing. Yeah, but it was a really nice thing that my parents have done to find me a creative outlet when I was very obviously not interested in the more boring music and kind of practice. But I just Yeah, um, I, you know, well, like this, this live stream is usually kind of, um, we, we try to focus on scripting, but I'm just also a really huge fan of your music. So, uh, if, oh, thank if, you. if there is time, I'd, I'd like to kind of ask you some questions about that as well. Um, and I <laughs> sure. also saw that your your kind of formal education, um, which is another thing me and Leandro talk about a lot, is in mathematics. And I'm sure that comes really yeah, yeah. in handy with DSP. But then how did you go from mathematics to learning to script? Was it like an autodidactic process or did you take formal classes of any kind? I was, I was very, very lucky. lucky. Uh, my, my dad's, dad's very, very, very technical. technical. Um, um, he does, he does a sort, sort of. Yes, yeah, yeah, so, so he took a program quite, quite a young, young age, age, like, like seven or eight. Right? Um, and and I, was, I, was, I was, my brother, my brother was learning, learning all the time, and I was just jealous. jealous. And, and yeah, so, yeah, so, so he, he sort, sort of taught me the basic basic programming and the language language. But almost immediately, I started trying to do sound. So, first, like, the, 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 the PC speaker, speaker. The, the, the one that plays all tunes, tunes which, which anyone around, around, around back in the 90s, 90s you know, you'd know, you you hear, hear the beep beep, beep. when a PC starts, starts up, and, and that, that was the speaker there, and they play tunes with it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then, you know, I learned, I learned Python, Python, I learned PHP, and, and I was always trying, trying to do something with music, or like music theory, or audio. And because my dad actually, he does, well, he did at the time, uh, analog radio chip design. Wow. So he was very up on his signal processing. Uh, so he used this great source of information um, that, you know, whenever I wanted to do something, he'd give me background the background information of how it works. And I really, one of my strongest, of my strongest memories, memories uh, actually was uh, 
I was in the back, I was in the the back of the car uh, on the way uh, to school. On the way to school. And I was like, and Dad, I was like, Dad, how does MP3 how does MP3 encoding work? Because that was because that was MP3 sort of MP3 the big thing, sort of thing, and it was all that kind of thing at the time. Um, um, and he gave and he gave me this perfectly perfectly explanation explanation of what, in retrospect, is like the very beginnings of the Fourier transform. But like pitched perfectly for a twelve-year-old me. Um, so yeah, I was just so lucky. Um, I learned a lot of stuff from my dad early on, and then as my my mathematical understanding grew, I did, you know, continue to self-teach uh, a lot of the uh, the sound and signal processing mathematics parts of that, along with the programming. Wow. Um, as a sort of yeah. yeah. That is so interesting, because um, well, you know, in the in the music world. Um, we're always um, are, are jealous of people who are from like a musical family because um, we're like, oh well, that's just in their blood. They grew up listening to music and seeing instruments in the house. So I've never seen anybody hmm. who, who's got that, but with like coding and, and signal <laughs> processing um, aspect of things. Yeah, um, that is very interesting. Um, yeah, I was I was lucky for that as well because. Uh... And my, my family's also really valued music. So I did piano and violin mm. and had singing lessons and stuff. And yeah, my, my grandmother was a, a professional composer wow. uh, for a bit. Oh. Um, so yeah, like uh, I think it was just, uh, I, was, I was very fortunate in what was around that I could just hoover up. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know that, um, and this is, this is a deep uh, dive thing. I'm, I'm a very professional stalker uh, well i'm not professional nobody paid me to do it but i'm but i'm good at it so i know that your sister has contributed lyrics to your music is that correct uh, that's correct, correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah uh she's, she's uh, uh yeah, yeah she's, she's she's really, really great, great language, language and works translator, translator and stuff, stuff. And, and there was, there was one, one song that it just, just it was christmas, christmas and we, we were, were sort of around the piano, piano as we sometimes do sometimes, sometimes singing carols, carols. Sometimes, Sometimes just, just messing, messing about. about. And then there's this board, board game, Carcassonne. Carcassonne. Mm, I don't know. Uh, which, which we love. love. We, we, we love, love to play, play as a family. family. And you um, have sort of little figures, figures and you create, create a landscape, landscape and then like, like control, control bits of it. it. Uh, and, and we, we just, just decided, decided to write a song. song. So, so she wrote most of the lyrics to, to that. that. There's this song, song which is just about the board game. And when you first listen to it, you're like, oh, it's like sweet and epic. And then when you know it's about the board game, you're like, Oh, oh, it's it's, it's, it's literally, literally just, just how you play. play. <laughs> so, yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah, I guess I didn't know the board game, so I did not uh, pick up on that reference, and I did think it's very epic. Um, Is that, that on your, your YouTube, YouTube channel, channel Garant? Garant? Uh, Ooh, I don't know. It's, it's definitely, definitely on my band, band camp. camp. All right. I've got a few. Uh, it's just my name, Garant. 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 Uh, uh -huh. The Carcass song, song with the G. G. Yeah. Uh, there's a terrible, terrible portmanteau pun. Um, All right. Yeah. yeah. There is um, yeah links to Garen's Bandcamp and to Signalsmith's website and to Garen's, of course, uh, GitHub repository. And all of that are in the description, um, as well as additional links. Um, so the big question um, is coming for you, Garrett. Is how did you learn EEL two? Cause like, where where is where is the, where are the resources on that? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, 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 it's a, a bit, bit of a cliche, cliche to say this, but, this, but like, like once you know maybe three programming, programming languages, languages, they all start, start to look about the same. Um, like, like almost, almost everything, everything works, works kind, kind of the same, same way with, with different, different syntax. syntax. Uh, so, so, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Once, so, so once, once I've, I've done, done sort of this bit of Python, Python and so on, um, um, there's, there's just just just, just the documentation, documentation sketchy as it is on, on, on the repo website. website. Um, um, and, and I, I, I dabbled, dabbled with it for like most, most of the decade, decade. and then um, I, had I had a bunch of free time, time so I quit my job at one point, point and, and decided, decided, yeah, yeah I'm going to see how far I can push this, and that's when I made some of my the, the, the pet synth, synth effect, effect, which, which was uh, one, one of the ones in my, in my set. set. And, and then, then it just kind of grew from there. there. And, and that, that, that kind of gave me confidence, the confidence to move into C++, C++ audio, audio and VST3s, which is just what I'm working, working on at the moment. From, 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 from there, it's kind of just, just a great language, language just getting something that exists and playing around with sound. 
I, I really appreciate, appreciate the, the, mm-hmm. uh, including that. Um, yeah. Um, was there? Well, well, we've spoken about like a few of the limitations of um, writing a JSFX, like sixty-four sliders. But did you? Did you at any point run into any of that, uh, something that you had an idea for, but you were like, well, w- with EL2 and with the JSFX, I cannot um, implement this idea? Yeah, yeah that's, that's one, one of the things that made me move to C++, C++ but, but like, like, you, you have, have to, to get, get quite, quite good, good and, and be making, making really, really interesting things, things before that's, uh, before that's, that's a, uh, an issue. issue. So, so if, if you get, if you get, get to the point where you're bumping up against the limits of the language, then congratulations. Um, but, but no, I ended up I made uh, kind, kind of a preprocessor. processor. Uh, so I sort of it out took, took in something, something that was basically, basically JSFX, JSFX with some, some extra syntax, syntax on it, and then an output JSFX, JSFX so that you could, could get, get things, things that were closer to C++, C++ kind of objects, objects or C structs. structs. Um, and the and whole thing thing's like, it, it, it was a bit of a hack, but, um, but you know, when you're... I, I, just I just want to be able, able to carry using the effects, effects but like, like yeah, yeah, it, it has, has its limits, limits but it, you, know, you know, you can create, create a working, working effect in like 10 lines, lines of JS effects, effects, which is just, just incredible. incredible. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it's, 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 you know, every, every language, language has its own compromises, and I, I, I really, really respect, respect where JS effects are. Mm. Um, I, I have literally hundreds of questions, so uh, I don't know, Leandro or Bo, if you have any questions or if anybody in the chat has questions, uh, let us know, because I can, I, I have questions on tap over here, and I don't want to be... I, 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 have, I, have, I have a, a question. question, I have, I have a, a question. question. So, so I, I don't have, don't have uh, a lot of background, a lot of background in digital, digital signal processing. processing. I have I not have been learning not that, been since, learning I that since I was a child. And I tried and to, I pick, tried up to the pick up the knowledge as I went. As I, went and and I would read I your would code, read your and, code I read and I would read other JS other effects, effects and, and, I and I would Google, would a, Google lot, a lot trying to find trying things. To find and things. then sometimes, and then I, would sometimes find, I would find like these books like, that were supposed to teach me stuff, but they are, I guess, mostly for Engineers, like engineers, not really for not people, really who, for want people who want to write audio effects. Audio so, effects. so my question to my you question is, to you is for people who are trying to who learn are trying this to learn this now, now, what are, what are the, sources? the sources? How can we find How this knowledge find besides, this knowledge besides, besides just scrambling to understand, scrambling to understand the code that, the code is, out that is out there? I I wouldn't know how I, to answer that because there's so, much, so, not so much not how I learned. How I learned. You know, I, I spent I spent decades very slowly, decades very slowly, away at these way of things and understand and understand. And for example, for IR example, filters, IR filters, like the recursive, like the recursive filters. filters. I was just blocked I was just for ages. FAR was, was super intuitive to me. Intuitive to me. Um, um, and it was only until I was until I was you know in university, like years years after I've been doing doing audio stuff, I finally you know. You know, got, got uh, just uh, a small handle, handle how, it worked. how it worked, and then and then actually actually something clicked. Something clicked. Uh, uh, so yeah, so don't, yeah, don't, don't, I would recommend, I would my recommend my that takes that takes <laughs> forever. Forever. Um, there's um, a great there's a great uh, Discord, uh, if Discord. You're not aware of it. There's this the audio uh, programmer. The audio programmer. Um, they have a YouTube um, channel. They have a Discord with really great community. Hang out there and hang out there and like because it's because it's people ask interesting questions and. You know, it's, 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 a, a, it's a great place. place. If you're if you're deeply stuck, stuck on uh, some audio processing stuff, I'd, I would check that out. Um, and there's a whole channel for just like where you can ask for recommendations of where to where to learn this or like specific things that you don't understand about this chapter in this book. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess if, uh, another, another way of asking what I'm trying to understand is. I guess this is one of those things that takes a lifetime to learn, so the earlier you start, the longer it takes. So I guess the question is, what are the things that you think people should know? People who are interested in this topic, what are the subjects that you think they should read about? I don't know. I think you can you can get a lot done with whatever tools you have. Like, I was doing interesting things with Python, uh, and audio, audio just, just like, like reading and writing wave files because I didn't understand C++ at that point, you couldn't do plugins or anything. Um, and yeah, I mean, at that point, I knew what the FFT was, uh, but not to a, like a very specific uh, extent. So I was, you know, so I was, 
I was a teenager, I was kind of like, I wanted to get stuff done. I wanted to make something interesting. And I think that almost that having a goal is more important because um, you kind of you, you have where you are and then you have where you want to, like the specific thing you want to achieve and you just hammer your way through and you, you copy code and kind of un- half understand how bits of things work and then like you achieve the thing and then you go, great. And then take it somewhere else. And you, you just kind of walk around the space enough um, is I think it's, yeah, if you're stuck on something, find a way around it. Do, do, do take a different approach to keep just moving. Um, I think this is more important to me than like, math, I mean, math is really going to help you. Uh, um, and like, if, you, if you've got really solid math, then you can just read and eventually just work out everything else in first principles. It's not maybe the most efficient way to do it, but, um, you know, it, it, it was, if you had to pick one tool to take with you on a desert island, I think just having an understanding of like vector spaces and that kind of uh, thing would just, you know, that would really help. Would you, say, would you say also kind of similar to that, not knowing a good level of math is that like a deal breaker is that gonna at some point kind of put a really hard brick wall on your progress as somebody who um, is trying to design like dsp processing i think think that if you don't if you don't have the math then you're not going to uh, be exploring new things in the mathematical area but you'll still be able to pull stuff together right you'll you know you'll have your effect that you've made or like, like a, a chain that you've made, where you're like, oh, yeah, I've got this setup where it's like, I do this EQ, and I have this wave shaper, and like you'll be able to kind of say, I want to make this thing I've cobbled together out of five pieces, and then you kind of stick that together with code into an effect with like dials and stuff, and that's a really useful thing to be able to do. Um, and you don't need to be able to make up your own basic building blocks to, to be able to make the thing. Um, but, but the other thing, thing I'd say is I learned a lot of my maths because I needed it. Um, in the same way as I was saying with the audio, like kind of ham your way through. Because uh, when I was programming, I was like, you know, I was drawing stuff on the screen in QBasic. And I wanted to draw it rotated. And I didn't know how. So I went to my dad and I was like, I want to draw it rotated. And so he had to teach me trigonometry. Uh, to make that work and that was very motivated by like specific goals um and i had the programming but didn't have the maths so you can learn the maths as you go along but you know everything's driven by this kind of i want to achieve this thing and you're willing to put in a bit of effort to learn just a few details each time you want to achieve something and eventually you end up with this very intuitive picture of how that bit of the world works you also so you designed the correct me if i'm wrong on this but you designed the jsfx ui library that comes with your plugins that um yeah. they look they look incredibly good um and yeah could you talk about that a little bit like um is the is the actual design does it take place like in another program and then you import it or is it all on el2 it's it's all in uh, EL2 or JSFX, uh, the language environment. Um, so basically, I was writing. I had just been writing effects that were the standard sliders that you get in the grey screen, um, and I wanted to write an effect that was uh, not just it had more sliders, but it had things that couldn't be represented as sliders. So in Python, if you can draw shapes with the mouse. Mm-hmm. And I, you, know, you just can't, that's not a slider. Um, and so I was kind of forced into writing something, uh, but it's, it's all in code. So uh, like, I'm, I'm sure the code is a bit, a bit horrible to, uh, to wade through, but it's like the model is you, you start with this viewport and then you say, well, take the top half and then take the left half of that. And then, uh, and then you kind of have the smaller viewport, you draw stuff inside there. And then you back out, like, up the stack of viewports that you've created. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not, there's not, like, a separate design step. I just say, like, well, I know I want two rows. And the top row's got seven dials in it. So mm-hmm. 
split them through vertically and then split them seven horizontally and draw a die on each one. Mm. Um, you know, sketch the pattern on paper. That's about all I did. That is very cool. But the first one, it, it didn't look that quite as good as it does now when I first started because it was uh, it just these plain colours. Um, and then it got prettier at times. I figured out more features of JSFX I could use. Um, yeah, I'm working through your, um, again, just to, in case people don't know, I, I, I can I can also show it maybe in, in a bit. You have this kind of JSFX that is itself a tutorial on how your uh, UI works. And it's really actually elaborate and really well designed. Like a cha there's chapters, you click on the pages. Um, and, and so just to make sure I understood you, like that is, so when we're going to like another page, to another screen, um, that's all kind of laid out in one page and we're like navigating like up or down or. Oh, no, no. Like each, each individual screen is laid out with those little viewports and sub viewport stacks. Mm -hmm. So it'll be like split at the top, have the title. Then, like, the bottom bit goes in two halves with, like, the code on one side and the whatever. Um, but there's a variable, which is the screen name. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the code of that um, self-documenting thing, there's a big, like, set of if statements. Like, if the screen is this function name, um, draw this screen. If the screen is this other function name, draw this screen. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't write that out by hand. Uh, this is another thing where I... Uh, you know, don't, as a program, don't do anything tedious. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've done something twice, that's fine. The third time you do it, you probably want to automate it. Uh, so that documentation and the web version and uh, what have you, it's all, it's all auto-generated from some uh, text files and code snippets wow. in a big JSON document. And then that compiles to like the web and the effects and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, this is the kind of thing that you build up when you've been doing something for a while and it's gotten slightly out of control. Um, I, I wouldn't try and learn how to use anything by looking at the code, but using it as, as, the, as the app, I think, yeah, I was quite pleased with that. Mm -hmm. um, I also, this is, uh, well, kind of related to what well, you said on Audio Programmer, you have a video called um, Let's Talk About Reverb, and you have this presentation on there um and I, on a side uh, you know as a content creator question uh, maybe you could tell me later how you make those really cool like little diagram animations um really love those um but you talk about uh well i wrote it down here just to make sure that i at least paraphrase you slightly correctly so so you use an all pass filter um you got to, just to make sure if I remember it right, you have these um, delay buffers. Then you have a mixer that will you, will you duplicate the incoming signal to multiple channels. Um, then you mix them together with this matrix. Um, then they go into a delay buffer, or the delay buffer may come early. And then you use all pass filters. And we last week on the stream kind of came up with this all pass filter thing that you only apply to the mid channel and that on headphones mm -hmm. make it seem like you're listening, like you get a little crosstalk. So, so we did it cause we saw yeah, yeah. Dan Worrell do it. I don't know if you're familiar with Dan Worrell, um, but we didn't exactly understand why that happened. So do you, um, do you know why that happens, or can you explain it to, to us? So, so first, first I'm just going to uh, point, point of clarification there. there. Um, what you're thinking, thinking of from all pass filter, filter is a one, one it's a single, single channel, channel pass filter. filter. That's the thing like, like feedback loop and, and um, um, the feed forward part. part and, um, that's the classic, classic one. one. Uh, the the reverb, reverb talk, talk that I gave actually is like, all use those all together. Don't use those at all. Which, which, because, because I, 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 I find, find one trick to like, like tune to sound, sound good, good or, or reverb stuff. stuff. Um, so, so I just, I just avoid, avoid it completely. And, um, what it actually does is you have this, this when you have a multi channel signal, signal uh, if, if you, you delay, delay the channel by different amounts and then, then mix, mix, and then, then do another delay, delay, delay and mix, mix delay and mix, mix. then that, that, like each of those steps is a multi channel all pass filter. 
I would, I would say, say that multiple, multiple articles, articles can, be, can be, there's, there's much, much wide variety, variety and they can be, be have no feedback, feedback on whatever. whatever. So, so uh, what's what the talk? talk? I think I'll explain it. Like better, better, better. Um, or, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but in terms of the, um, what you're hearing in the mid side, stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, so, so, I mean, all the parts of it is, it's, uh, it delays, it, it, it changes, changes the phase of frequencies, like some differently than others. Um, another way to understand it is it delays certain frequencies. So uh, you'll be, when you have that sort of mid side stuff, you're splitting into uh, the mid and the side mm -hmm. signal. And you're kind of delaying, for some frequencies, you're delaying the mid signal, or the side signal a little bit. So they're no longer in sync. Um, which means you get this like phase shifted um, stereo thing, and because that's how we uh, we understand how like the direction this stuff's coming in, coming from that that sort of plays with our spatial sense. Mm. Um, I don't know. If that's... Yeah, so it's it's because of a delay. Um, sorry, people also were saying that there was an echo on your voice, and I think the echo is resolved now. Um, so sorry if you didn't get that last thing that uh, Garant said. Um, I think it is because, um, yeah, NDIs are weird, and I think everybody's voice just comes out of a single mono channel, uh, but I get three video um, feeds that are separate. So my bad on that one, everybody. Hopefully it's okay now. Um, so, so what do you think about... Well, everybody else, if, if you have any other questions, let us know. I mean, I have questions forever, but uh, if anybody else has questions, and also maybe we can get to some coding action as well at some point. I'll let Bo take this one. Okay, sure. I, I, I don't have any specific questions. But I, it sounds like you watched the uh, stream. You watched the stream last week, right? Because uh, it sounds like you're familiar with the plugin that we made. Garant. I, I I watched some. Yeah, I watched a couple of recent ones to catch up because I, I I wasn't actually aware of this. Uh, and I okay. Uh, yeah. Cool. Oh, you reached out and uh, this is a cool series. I like it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I that love it. Nice to hear. This is my second time on it. Yeah, Bo used to be kind of our most recurring viewer. So then we were like, well, let's just let's just go back to not having too many viewers and uh, doing um, and just having Bo on here. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll probably make a video out of some of these, at least. I've been planning to kind of do that because I because I understand that some people just in terms of time can't make it to these. And some people just in terms of not having the attention span for, you know, three hours of talk about code, yeah. um, don't watch these. So I may yeah. just make a video out of the, you know, tidbits of this that I um, found to be interesting. Um, it sounds like a good idea. Actually, uh, I came come to think of uh, if there was if there was a way to visually show how the phase shifts in that plugin is uh, is occurring. I, I've tried a couple of sort of phase um, scopes, oscilloscopes type thing is, but they don't, sh the, the, the sort of, it's too messy if it's like two, um, two stereo channels, um, you, you don't see any difference. So if there was a way to show what the actual uh, plugin does, specifically does, that would be cool. So to, to get a visual feedback for that. Um, you could try, there are some stereo visualizers. Um, and the, there's one in my set called Panalyzer. Mm -hmm. oh, so yeah. I love my poor um, And so maybe if you did like a frequency sweep with that, uh, you, you'd see that it, you know, for some frequencies it would just stay vertical as a mono signal. Yeah. And then for others, maybe it would like turn to a, a circle or like a line in a different direction. And you'd exactly. See exactly. What it was doing to different frequencies. Uh, I don't know uh, if that'd be helpful. Things if if you just show the um, um, 
the the final results there's not much difference with the plugin on and off you you need to sort of show what the difference is so if you could take the original signal and null it with the uh, processed one um so it would show the difference oh that sounds great that looks great um yeah panalysis um maybe maybe i can show this to the viewers as well um also um just to elaborate on what bo says um other than like a digital um other than a way of visualizing it i what i really sometimes need when it comes to dsp is i want to kind of imagine it and see see and read some values but i don't want to do it like 48000 times a second i want to like slow it down to a to a signal that is so slow that it actually doesn't make a sound but that it, at least for my slow brain i can understand like oh first sample this happened no no one has a f brain as fast right. as that or yeah, yeah uh, but i wish there was a way to go like yeah so sample 1 this happened to it sample 2 this happened to it sample 3 like and it's just very slow and it's uh, yeah, in a way that I can kind of like track it with my brain. So uh, I don't know if you have anything clever like that, Garant, that uh, you can recommend just a way to kind of slow down the processing so that we can kind of understand the underlying maths, like what's going on and what's happening. If that question even made sense. I guess there's always, you can look at impulse responses um, and just sort of, you send a you flick it and see what happens. Um, it's, it, this is a tough problem. Like I spend a lot of time, uh, I spent a lot of time getting my, some of my diagrams right to try and show, you know, this very unintuitive stuff because it happens, as you say, way faster than you can see. Um, or, or, you know, we don't hear each sample individually we hear frequencies and so there's a kind of this uh sometimes you want to see the, the waveform sometimes you want to see uh the, the spectrum sometimes you want to see something else and yeah it's kind of it's just a different sense and it's kind of impossible to reconstruct it's it's a it's a tricky problem sorry mm -hmm. yeah it is a very tricky yeah. problem um and i mean um i think like like Leandro, I think he got most of, and probably Bo as well. I'm the least experienced of everybody when it comes to just writing anything with DSP. I use Max MSP, but that's really cheating. That's just like, hey, somebody made this object that does a perfect thing that you want, and you connect it to another object that somebody else made. Um, so it kind of doesn't. No such thing as cheating. Yeah, not cheating, but it's completely <laughs> valid to build things this mm -hmm. way. Yeah, no, Abs absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, um, but like in terms of like I I've cobbled things together that were like pretty complex, but it doesn't mean that like I understood actually what's going on kind of under the hood of those objects uh, when it comes to Max MSP. I think Balance. Sorry. Yeah, that's no, that, that's just saying that's um that's what I was saying before about like you know if you don't if you don't go really that deep into the maths then that's a totally fine way to make a plugin. Like there's a couple of things where you know if I really work it out I could probably deeply understand where this formula comes from. But you know you look up the EQ cookbook sometimes and you're just like I just want a high pass <laughs> and you just copy out some formula. You know it's it's just like. If you want to know, if you want to open up the hood, great, and you know, have fun mm -hmm. <laughs> and ask for help. Um, but like, if you don't need to, you know, get get that get that goal, um, and like putting together small components. That's a lot of how Juice like empowers people. I I not really a Juice user myself, but like one of the things that people like about it is that you have all these building blocks. Except instead of Max MSP stuff, it's C++ classes and it's it's the same and it's it's real audio development mm -hmm. yeah. um, are you allowed slash willing to um, talk about anything you're kind of cooking up right now with signal Smith is it too early to, to talk to the public about that stuff uh, I've got a couple of interesting collaborations kind of uh, happening uh, at the moment uh, which I should, probably shouldn't give away too much about um, 
Yeah, <laughs> we do have a, a, a mailing list. Uh, and also, if you want to sign up to be a tester, then when something kind of starts looking likely, uh, you could come and get an alpha version of it. Uh, oh, if cool. you're willing to put up with some bugs. Yeah, um, so, I signed up and the we'll link to. to that is in the description if anybody wants to um, be, a, be a tester. Oh, wow. I'm going to get, <laughs> get overwhelmed. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, don't well there's there's eight people here so even if all of them do hopefully that would be yeah, no, it's great. Too like, many. more people is the more the merrier yeah. um yeah. and what is the market like these days uh people sometimes say that <clears throat> there is no money to be made in audio plugins but then again there are these expensive audio plugins so what is your take on it i think that um it's, I mean, it's, it's, there's this general thing just in, in the world where like 90% of startups fail. Uh, it's just, it's tough out there. Uh, and if you start up a small business doing anything, um, it, you know, the chances of it being long-term sustainable are pretty small. Um, I think a lot of people come to audio development with, uh, with a lot of passion and like the the drive to make the thing which means that even when it's not being self-sustaining they still do it at the weekends and you know it's still important to them and that's that's great that's these passion projects are why we have a lot of stuff but it also means that uh people are sticking around when you know if you start a florist you would have closed up shop by now mm -hmm. you know you're, you're getting three thousand dollars a year from it it's not like a business but it's still really good and you want to make these things. And so I think there's a lot of, because it's this creative industry, you know, people still write music. Music's <laughs> really tough to, you know, make money off. Um, like I, Signal Smith Audio, like uh, we, we are making our own effects, but like when, when that makes money, that'll be in the future and an unknown amount. Um, but we're doing a lot of stuff with like, for more established people who have a brand, and they want something designed, like a, an algorithm or something. Like we have this problem, we don't understand it, or like we want something that does this. Can you make something that that achieves that that sound? Um, and that's like kind of adjacent. That's close enough to that creative stuff that it's, it's really uh, very fun to do. Um, but you know, the moment you're making your own stuff, then suddenly it's it's all about branding and how you reach people and like it's not just make something that sounds good. Um, so does that make sense? That's yeah. probably, a, yeah, I don't have a lot of wisdom here. I just, I can tell you what I'm doing. Uh, but, yeah, you, yeah. And, and I correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, when I saw the date of when SignalSmith was founded, I was like, oh, this is a pandemic uh, project. That like <laughs> pandemic kind of put it in motion. Maybe you had the idea for it for kind of years and years. And that finally gave you like a little bit of, breathing time to to kind of get it off the ground is that how that happened well actually i i've been signal smith as a username on a few different platforms for a while because it's quite that's quite a good it identity great. for like yeah. how i um how i feel about what i what i like to do um and i march 2020 was actually when i quit my job uh it was not specifically because i had grand plans for signal smith audio um, but I was really tired of my previous job and I just bailed. Um, and did you yeah, work as a mathematician or as a social developer? I was a software developer. Yeah. So like I, I graduated maths and looked around and I was like, well, I could be a teacher, which actually I quite enjoy. Um, or I could be a maths sort of researcher person. Um, or I've got this hobby that I've been doing for a while, um, and became a software developer instead. Uh, I was meant to go straight from university into working for an audio company, uh, but you know it was uh, 2009. Everyone was, you know, it was all. It wasn't a great time for a lot of businesses uh, just after the 2008 crash, and so you know that that plan kind of fell through. And then it's taken me like a decade and striking out like this to actually get back into audio as a as a thing. Um, but no, I actually registered the company because I had a, a great idea um, and was trying to get funding 
because <laughs> there was this grant scheme for like uh tools for creative uh people uh that was like specifically addressing the challenges of remote stuff in the pandemic and i was in a choir and i was like this is a problem that needs to be solved because choir rehearsals online you can't do them on right. scene the latency is just impossible um and so trying to trying to make that happen um we didn't get the funding but like i had to register the company to do that and that kind of then kicked me in, into gear and all sorts of other stuff snowballed mm. from there i mean at, at any point if anybody i think comes up with a way of like manageable latency <laughs> kind of online music audio uh you know, sig signal sending and receiving, there is the market for that is going to be there. Um, and yeah, I, I think like somebody will, will come out with something because there's there's lots of ways of getting like lossless audio. There's lots of ways of getting like a decent yeah. low latency. But um, in so far as something that allows you to like really jam with people online, um, I think it's like not there yet. There's There's really kind of good attempts at doing it but nothing that is and maybe it will never be as fluid as like seeing another person or you're in a choir you know um actually seeing each other and even to an extent i think in a choir like your the sound waves that you're producing are literally affected by the sound waves of the people who in you know close proximity to you are also wiggling air you know that the sound becomes a unit um but yeah i think yeah if anybody if anybody comes up with that, you will um, have all the money that I can afford to spend on you for sure. <laughs> no, it's tough. I still was still trying to this tiny group that's, that was all that remains of the, the choir that mm -hmm. I was leading. Uh, and yeah, all it means is that like I've just got really used to just like conducting, I guess, like 200 milliseconds ahead of the beat. Wow. And just... <laughs> It's, it does your head in, but I got used to it eventually. Um, no, this does not. Well, if they'd given me funding, I could have solved it anyway. Was, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, any any plans to do any kind of new JS effects? Is that just something that like you you will get an idea for and and kind of uh, bang out in a weekend, or or how does that work? How long does it take you to make these plugins? Because, wow. I mean, when I was sort of really on a roll with them, um, yeah, I could just make one in a couple of hours um, because uh, <laughs> most of making a plugin is not the audio bits. Like when you know when, when you sort of when you're fluent in that stuff, um, like a lot of it is is the dials and the parameters and the control and making it nice when you change the controls. So it doesn't like click or whatever. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, so there's one in my in my set which is cross polyphonic yeah. FM, and I wrote that in a couple of hours when I was on holiday. Uh, I was uh, oh Portugal, um, and yeah, yeah, I just I like, woke up with an idea. Partner was still asleep and was like, oh, I've got got a bit of time. Bang this uh, um, cool. Like I, I kind of slowed down with the JSFX stuff because, like, uh, a little while ago, I, I was, as I said, reaching the limits of the JSFX language, um, and kind of made an effort to try and move into C plus plus stuff instead. It's slow going. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm kind of ready now, and like, actually, you know, released an effect which ran on other people's computers, but it took just a hell of a long time. Uh, mm -hmm. JSFX is an incredibly easy and great way to to create and and share stuff, and I, I I miss how fast that was. So maybe I will spontaneously create something. Uh, That's cool. But but you yeah, can prototype in JSFX and then transfer yeah. it. So I actually know some. Uh, of, well, I'm not going to name drop, but I I know of a, a serious audio company that was doing some sort of research stuff, and they prototyped their their codec work in JSFX partially just to see how, you know, make sure it all worked and the things added up before they uh, yeah. rolled it out in, in C++, which is very cool. That is awesome. Um, I actually used your cross polyphonic FM because I was using like orchestral libraries recently. 
And what I like about this, like you put it on anything, it just gives it a, and like not, not like 100% wet, but just adding a slight amount of this, like does something that it will make a sound and kind of turn it just a little bit unusual. And then, um, yeah, so I was like, I need to kind of set my library sounds apart from like probably 100 or <laughs> 300 other people who are doing this scoring competition, probably using the same sounds. And I just used a little bit in the background then. Yeah, love the way, love the way it works. I love the way it sounds. Um, Droplets is, of course, my favorite. Um, but yeah, all of them are, are really cool. Um, so you know that that talk that you did, that uh, reverb talk, I thought that would be something that it would probably be somewhat um, easy and like quick to do um, as a JSFX plugin. So I don't know if anybody has another idea, but we could we could maybe try and like write at least a few components of that reverb um, as a JSFX. Um, what do you all think? Can you explain what this is about for people who didn't watch the talk? Uh, yeah, so um, basically reverbs, uh, algorithmic reverbs, the feedback delay reverb design, um, it can often end up with a, a bad reputation for being um, sort of easy to get going and then difficult to tune. Like, and some of the designs that are out there, they have I don't know, they have like bits of black magic kind of feeling mysteries um, inside them. And I wasn't wasn't a fan of that. So uh, yeah, the talk is, uh, it's, a, it's a design for a reverb. It's got no code in it at the moment, but I'm, I'm doing a, a bigger version of the talk. Uh, and, um, but like, it's a design for a reverb, which is, uh, easy to get right and tune properly so you don't have to like carefully structure things um i just you know i didn't trust myself i was asked to write a reverb i didn't trust myself to a bunch of fiddly tuning so i came up with a design that was like me proof um <laughs> and then i started writing it up as a as a series of blog posts and then over months and months hammered it down into like a a single blog post in a talk, um, which is what I presented. So yeah, it's just a it's a, a reverb which I think is uh, hopefully reliably good sounding, like high quality. And um, when you say tune a reverb, um, what do you mean by that? Like kind of just in terms of like I want the decay rate to be one second, and how to how to kind of give the user control of that, or um, more like. Uh, if you've got, you know, this network of delays and that kind of stuff, like what happens if, you know, if two delays are the wrong kind of coincidentally roughly the same length if they kind of resonate or like, you just got a lot of parameters to, to fix. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, the, the delay length is something you can, you can figure out and, and tune yourself um, with, you know, you can figure out, I want the delay to last this long. I Therefore, I need these gain values and so on. But uh, yeah, just there are so many small choices in a reverb and the all pass structures that you get in in some of these papers that have been published, like the you know an all pass like stuffed inside another all pass, and you know the relationship between the delays on the inner and outer levels. Like you kind of get why they are good but I wouldn't be able to choose the values off the top of my head. Mm. And so I wanted to design where I just threw random number gen generators at all of it and it's super robust. Um, it's kind of the, the dream there. Mm. Um, as I was watching your talk, I was like, well, I can definitely not just code this without supervision and help, but I tried to <laughs> kind of cobble it together from an effects chain and, and, it, it didn't it didn't work out too well, but I should have still saved it because I got some of the way I just had like a few delays go in and then I uh, used a channel mapper and a few sends and then just tried to like send a little bit of each one to another one. Um, oh, yeah, you could. You could absolutely right. do that with a of the diffuser bit. Certainly mm -hmm. um, you could do with just like some really 
really basic effects actually that'd be really interesting mm -hmm. yeah um yep so you came up with this design but you never implemented it is that what happened oh i i implemented it but um yeah but then the the presentation didn't have any code in it because i only had half an hour mm -hmm. <laughs> um yeah but no it was it was for originally for for a client who came to me and just said write a reverb please with no like actual specifics so i was quite free to um do whatever it no they said they wanted to do low, low cpu so mm -hmm. i uh um yeah pulled something up mm -hmm. um that's always also um something that i find interesting like like kind of back in the day like like watching kind of how old video game audio designers you know dealt with the limitations that they had it wasn't just like go nuts any amount of like data that you want, use it up, uh, knock yourself out versus going like, you need to compose the music for this entire game and you only have like, uh, you know, 256 kilobytes of data to, to do that in. Uh, it's really interesting to me. Oh, yeah. we're going we're gonna to code a reverb. Um, if you all want, or I, I am really down for whatever, or or guarantee if you have any ideas, or if anybody has. Uh... No, that that sounds really interesting to me, and um, we could definitely, I think, aim for getting the diffuser sure. part of it uh, working. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Can I interject with a somewhat different question? Uh, how hard would it be to have a, a plugin that that you can drop a different plugin in in JSFX? Like a meta plugin, but, but JSFX sense. meta plugin? Yeah, yeah, sort of a meta plugin. I'm thinking of, remember my Delta signal thingy, mm -hmm. Aria? So you get you get a null test. So you get only what the effect does. So you drop one JSFX into another JSFX or a load or whatever. How can you actually do that? Uh, I don't think that's possible uh really uh, okay but but what you could do is maybe you could make a like a set of effects which yeah which i think you've i've is, is a thing i've seen where like you have one you put before and one you put yes. after. yes sort of a mid-side of... encoder decoder except yeah and they, they the can thing. like the later one can cheekily pass data back to the first one mm-hmm in a way that violates like causality, but is fine. <laughs> um, and I think that's uh, that's probably the best you can best you can do. In all right, all right. Interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. Delta is cool. Uh, I like using it um, every once in a while when I'm just not sure what's happening with something, um, or, yeah. or just the MS. I think the MS encoder decoder in in JS is uber genius that said like when i think about the user end i'm like i wish there was a simpler way um uh, in some plugins it's like exactly. in some DAWs, it's a click but i also don't want to be like that spoiled person because back in the day you had to load your <laughs> sessions manually by reading off of a list of where your parameters were and now nowadays we're like i have to open two plugins e uh, so yeah, I try to be like, if a workaround exists, then then it should be. Used. I have a question uh, related to this. So I don't, I agree. I don't know of a way to drop a plugin inside another using JS effects. But is it possible using VSTs and audio units? Oh yeah, I mean, there's, uh, yeah, that's. I that's think that's uh, Melda or Blue Cat has one that specifically does yeah, that. Yeah, there is. Um, the ones um, that I know, I can I can pull a few up. Um, you got oh great, Safari crashed. Um, I just want to open a new window just in case I have something weird and incriminating open somewhere because I do not prepare for these streams. Um, <laughs> at least technology wise, um, I'm just like oh here's my credit card information. Leandro probably knows of everything there is to know Here's about me downloading <laughs> illegal plugins yeah, um, <laughs> so there is oh now safari open um so there is meta plugin a meta plugin you can put as many plugins as you want inside a plugin and you can create chains of different plugins um so yeah each of these is a plugin um and you can have them kind of not all 
you, you don't you're not limited to a kind of linear plugin chain you can do whatever you want um and that's like 64 dollars. then there's plugin doctor um plugin doctor is more like analysis um Mm-hmm. Um, where it, it tells you what one plugin is doing to your um, to your thingamajig. Oh, this is from a Dan World video, I think. Uh, Just trying out compressors. Yeah. So the one I've heard of is Blue Cat's Patchwork. Blue Cat's Patchwork. Uh, yeah, I, I tried the demo a couple of years ago. Uh, I have to. I've not actually used it myself. I've just seen it mentioned a couple of times, and that's that's an effect. I think you can host. Yeah, I think you can host other effects, and they might even be able to like host an AU from a VST and vice versa mm. or something. I'm not all right. Really sure. Interesting. Um, but yeah, this is one of the things where like JSFX as a language has its limits, and C plus plus is kind of closer to the metal, and therefore you can do all sorts of all right uh, funky things mm-hmm. with it. Um. Cool. cool. Um, well, it's still all the pages that I didn't want seen showed up as I minimized one of them. So you can't win. Um, okay. So sh- should we? Sh- yeah. Should we try for a diffuser? Sure. Sure. Cool. Um, I mean. And yeah, I know that. Like, like I can do this all day. So at any point, if anybody has to leave, like, don't feel bad. Um, diffuser. Um, and then we'll just call it diffuser test for now. And here's a diffuser test. Um, something that I learned from, I saw that Garant, you're one of the few people who you put your name at the end of plugins versus at the beginning. And I now have a really great case for everybody doing that. And that's for, um, people who are visually impaired and they have a screen reader and with actions, with both actions and, and JSFX, if you're like kind of like going huh. down a list of things, so you're looking through like MPL actions and you're looking for a particular one. So you do a search and then your screen reader is going MPL search and MPL, the MP, M, 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 MPL, MPL. Like they just, the first thing they hear every time they are going down a list is, is a name that repeats. So I think a good argument for that is, yeah, everybody put your names at the end of your actions and plugins. I can but see why it doesn't want sort that. right. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, sorting mm. is a bit messed up with that. Um, so, and I'm reliant on people being able to spell my name to search for it, which is particularly risky for mm. me. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Counter counter argument. But yeah, I mean, accessibility is a really good, uh, good, strong one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess then it would be like, can something be scripted to auto detect everything before like the first underline, um, something like that. Uh, yes, this link and I'll also, I think it's already in the, in the description, but, um, I can, I can also open this link. Um, and you gotta show me how you do your cool animations. Um, like they're very simple, like those diagrams, but they are actually like video and they look really awesome. And I just lost the thing. No, right here. Yes. And I'll just try to make this. I have to resize things so that uh, everybody sees them. We've been bit before. Um, yes. Okay. So Garen, tell us what we're looking at. Uh, so this is the the core bit of the diffuser. Like, if this is all confusing, I would you know read the post. It's on my blog, um, or watch the video. Um, but yeah, this is the the core bit of the diffuser for the reverb, which is you have a multi-channel signal, and then you delay all the channels by different amounts, and then you put a mixing matrix so that you know all the delayed echoes from the different channels get distributed, and then you just repeat that. Uh, and each time you repeat it, you get a denser and denser kind of distribution. So if you click that animation button, hopefully we'll see it. Um, uh, how it produces these extra echoes. So you start with this, you know, some synchronized echoes coming in, and it desynchronizes them, and then you shuffle about a bit, and then it mixes them back so that all the channels have all the different new echo times in. Um, but you're still preserving energy and 
that's uh, so yeah basically if we can do this once and you know we implement these these small number of steps and then we just do that a few times then we should get uh, a good diffuser mm -hmm. which would be kind of cool um and uh, i had a question about the the polarity that is also kind of random or is there like method to it or do you just kind of random yeah just, just random cool. uh like it even sounds like kind of okay if you just skip that completely, but like I'd you know I'd, I'd flip mm -hmm. it. Um, so just pick pick it once mm -hmm. uh, when you're making your plugin, and it should sound pretty good. Whatever you end up choosing. Mm -hmm. I remember one of my old uh, instructors with Max MSP going like, you may get the urge to like control everything because you think you're trying to imitate nature, but actually the more random you go, the more natural a lot of things may sound versus you trying to like exactly replicate like nature or just whatever you want with like hard you being really strict about it yeah you don't need to randomize it every time you load the plugin you know you can rent you can flip a dice and then type that number into your code mm -hmm. um, but just yeah yeah as I say, this this design is meant to be robust. So even if you do it slightly differently to the way that I imagined it, hopefully it should come out all right. Mm -hmm. um, OK, so uh, anything else you wanted to show on this? I'll keep this handy for whenever we need to uh, refer to it. Yeah, it was just that animation to give a bit of context of what we're, uh, what we're attempting. Cool. Um, yeah, love these animations. They're so nice. What software do you use for them? Uh, so I use, uh, there's a, a web tool called Excaladraw, which is what I use for just making the diagrams in general. Cool. Um, and I, I use a, it's, it's a web-based tool. I have a custom fork because that's actually my handwriting in the, the handwriting font, um, which I've <laughs> painstakingly made into a, into a font. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, it doesn't do the animations though. So that, outputs a static image and then I've got a custom written Python script which uh, basically has oscilloscopes at like the right points um, yeah so the, the the cool tool here is like that the arrow tools and that kind of stuff is anyway yeah um, so again it's kind of a custom Python script and I've, I've written a web interface so that I can place the lines properly um, it's not very scalable mm -hmm. unfortunately <laughs> not something I'd be proud to share. Mm -hmm. Uh, interesting but i'm definitely proud of proud of the results yeah they look really nice um and and really like hand drawn which now that you explain it makes a lot of sense um okay so this is all the stock code so me and leandro usually get rid of all of it but is there anything from here you you need to keep or i mean that's yeah, yeah. fine um yeah the the first thing i think we just need yeah we can Get rid of it if you like but the first thing we'd need is the delay lines is i don't know if that's uh, something that you have to hand as like some a uh, jsfx thing to include or whether you write it from scratch each time um we can definitely what do you think leandro we have not talked about a delay line but we have talked about the principle that you need to use to write a delay line which is that big buffer and the delay line is well, we sort of did a delay line of a single sample with our EQ, mm. but you just take a, a, a slice of that buffer and you go around the slice. So for every sample, you go to the next one and then you wrap around. So it is just a section of the big buffer of 8 million samples, but you can think of it as a circle because it goes around. And then on each sample, you store the current sample in that place, but you also read what was there before you store it. So that's a simple delay line right there. So we know the principle behind it. You have to take a slice of memory and you have to traverse that slice of memory going around and you have to write there and you also have to read. In fact, you have to read before you even write. And that's uh, the principle behind the delay line. So. If you really want to understand the way that this delay line is going to work, I think we should write it from scratch. And it's not too long. It's not a lot of code. 
the concept behind it may be hard to grasp at first because you, you have to wrap your head around the idea that you are going to run the sample block in a loop and you have to think about the order of the operations to get everything right. So if you want to really dive into there, um, that's I find it interesting and it's not something we covered, not really, because our delay line was a single sample. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but if you want to move to the other parts of the effect, so uh, flipping polarities and then uh, joining the signals together and then we can actually get to the finish line quicker, quicker than we can copy and paste this from somewhere. Mm -hmm. I, you can copy and paste from my effects if you want, you can copy and paste uh, from most effects that do anything re time related. Yeah, in fact, uh, JSFX has a way that you can write libraries which can be included, like the UI library mm. um, that Aria was talking about earlier. Uh, so there are definitely, I'm, I'm, I, I have one, but I'm, there are others as well, um, where you can just pull in a delay line as a um, as like an object mm. and then use it from your from your code. But yeah, I mean, we could, if we haven't covered delay lines, then we could maybe maybe a whole reverb or a whole diffuser is a is a step too is, far. A, is a big goal. But we could we could write a delay line, and that could be quite satisfying. Cool. Let's do that. Yeah, because uh, uh, well, I would love to. Um, yeah, get 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 it in library form, and then it's that is that is it just like a function you recall, and it's like a tape in tape out kind of thing. That's where it was in in Max MSP. Yeah, yeah. You would go. Yeah in here and then out and you go delay it um i love that stuff yeah that's absolutely that's uh that's how it would work cool. yeah um so yeah so maybe maybe just a delay line okay yeah cool. awesome y'all y'all drive i i y'all tell me yeah. where to drive at <laughs> <laughs> uh okay so I guess I can start with what we need to set up. We need to pick a slice of memory. We know that we have like this 8 million slots that we can pick from. So we need a slice of that to be the space where we store our samples and then recall later. Uh, and then at this point, we can think about how much of how many samples we want, how much space we need to allocate for this. How long is this delay line? Uh, we can pick an arbitrary number or we can try to make sense of something like maybe we will have a slider for this. Uh, maybe we will have something like you are doing some maths <laughs> now to figure out how many samples we need to store to have a, a certain amount of time. Yeah. Um, and well, when it comes to a diffuser, uh, Garant, do you want the diffuser, like you want that delay time to be quite short, right? Um, yeah, but we're going to have a in the final design. You end up having a lot of delay lines. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, should it be written as a function, or and then recall yeah. the function? I mean, if we haven't done it before, I'm tempted to start with the simplest thing, which is a fixed number, say a hundred samples of delay. Mm -hmm. And if you can just get a hundred samples of delay working, then we can talk about dynamically choosing how big the buffer needs to be and that kind of stuff. So kind of start with the simplest case, which I think would be a fixed size buffer and a fixed size delay. And then we can look at that on the scope and see how it responds. Cool, sounds nice. Does that sound right? Yeah, OK. So we're going to say that the size of this slice of memory is 100 samples. And how about we start with something just for the left channel so we don't have to worry about copy and pasting a lot mm -hmm. or writing a loop or whatever. Yeah, um, sounds great. OK. so. The way that we can start this is maybe we can have an init mm -hmm. block just to declare that this is the place, this is the base address for the slice of memory we're going to use. Uh, it's not strictly necessary because I think we can allocate in the beginning of the block of memory. So we can just say, write uh, maybe delay line equals zero mm -hmm. or something like that. And that is, well, every variable in JS effect is already, it starts with zero. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of redundant, but it documents the intent of having a delay line, and we want the address of that delay line to live in position zero of this big block of memory. OK, so that is mostly for readers, not necessarily for the computer. Let's go and write a sample block. And in there, we 
are going to read from the delay line and write to the delay line. But, oh, I guess another variable we can write to document things on the init block is the delay line size, which we decided to be 100 mm -hmm. now. So go there to the init block and declare a variable called delay line size, maybe, or uh, if you have a better name for it, uh, then, delay, then go for just it. delay size. Yeah, whatever. Okay, and we're gonna. I'm just gonna say hundred to this. Yeah. Cool. Um, this is just so later when we need to say a hundred, we don't type a hundred. We use the name, which is. Uh, reveals the intention a little better, I think. Okay, so now we need to write and read uh, to this delay line, but where do we do it? Well, as I said, you have on every sample, you have to move on to the next slot. And then when you find the end of the block, you go back to the beginning. But we need some notion of this thing that goes around picking the right position in the delay line mm -hmm. to read and write from. Mm -hmm. So maybe here we have yet another variable. Uh, maybe how about we start the variable in the init block as well? And for this one, uh, maybe you can call it the delay line pointer or the delay position. I use index a lot, uh, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, there you go. Delay line uh, index, that sounds good. We use index around here uh, lots too. And is it just minus okay. one for now or is it? Uh, yeah, um, you can start with minus one. And then uh, it's something that we kind of touched on when we were doing multi-channel or when we were doing multiple filters in our EQ. I don't remember, but in any case, we had to do a loop and then we started with minus one so that in the sample block, we can, as the first line, we can say delay line index plus equals mm -hmm. one. In other words, we advance the index mm -hmm. by one. Darren, did you have an alternative idea for this? You are muted. Oh, I am oh. muted. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, this is this is coding style question. There's no, there's no right mm -hmm. answer. There's, uh, um, I find I find personally zero is easier to read. But um, so I'm going to quickly sketch out just in case anyone watching doesn't quite get this delay buffer thing, exactly sort of what we're talking about here because we have um, our our memory. Uh, and let's see, this is a hundred. So we've got a block of memory. Mm -hmm. I've got my uh, notebooks nearby. Let me also make um, your um, your screen a little bigger. Oh no, am I going to be dying? Great, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope the Skype quality doesn't completely ruin this. Um, but yeah, like, uh, so you start with a block of memory uh, and you this is like index zero has got some numbers in it. And then sort of, this is index 100, and you can read and write anywhere within this whole infinite, well, basically infinite section of memory. And this is your current position within the buffer. So what we're going to do is, as we get a sample in, we're going to write these values in to the buffer. And as we write, we move this pointer of like our current position in the buffer along. So we write audio data in, and then we each time when we've written that slot, we shuffle our index along so that the uh, we're now pointing at essentially an empty slot. And then we want to when we want to read, you take your current pointer and you move back however many steps you want. So if you wanted to have something that's delayed by say ten samples, you've got your index here, and you just minus ten and look at the value that you have in the buffer from 10 samples ago. The only complication with this is, firstly, when you reach the end, mm -hmm. when you've filled your entire buffer and your index is there, when you want to move this forward, you have to wrap it around. So when you increment your position in the buffer and it hits 100, you reset it to zero. So that your your position wraps around, and then you have to do the opposite thing when you're subtracting ten or whatever your delay time is. So if your you know if your current position is here, 
and you want to delay by 10 samples, that could end up negative. Mm -hmm. So you have to check, is the index that I've produced negative, at which point add 100 and start reading out from the, from the front end. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense as like a general approach of what we're doing? Mm -hmm. It makes sense to me. Thanks for drawing out the things that I was like drawing on the, on the air. <laughs> The Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, method. Then these things and these. Uh, yeah, it's great that you uh, that you did a drawing. And and by the way, Leandro, you can commandeer my screen at any time. You you know that. And if anybody else wants to, that's also very doable. Um, so, uh, Garrett, I have a question about that because okay, like in our case, which is which is a hundred samples. Um, you know, audio goes through a hundred samples like butter, like that. Uh, so then, once once it goes over, it is constantly like overwriting th that buffer that we have. Um, so yeah. at any point, say when I stop, it's it's gone around and now it stopped at measure fifty nine. So measure fifty nine, maybe like one or maybe like zero point zero eight something, and then uh, sample sixty is like minus 0 0.9 or something so there's that little like click that may happen if we stop the if we stop reading or, or if we stop writing the buffer that's going in a loop at some point that mm -hmm. is like in the middle of the buffer so how's that kind of tackled are you you mean if you stop it stop and start playing yeah say i say i stopped writing to the buffer at measure at at the 50th um index and then, and then now our current buffer um, has a thing that between measures, between samples 50 and, and 51, there's like a jump there. Is that a big deal or? That is, you'll hear that. Um, so like the, the index here, like the position in the buffer is not related to, you know, position in the project or bar, mm -hmm. or whatever. Like you just go around in circles and it doesn't matter where you are. Um, but it is it is important that in your init section, actually, uh, which is the thing that gets run when you press play, uh, that you you should have to clear out and set all this to zero. Otherwise, you'll end up with like a burst of some previous thing. Um, unless you do specific things in JSFX, it actually clears out all that memory for you, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so I think JSFX just kind of handles that because it's trying to be as friendly as possible. So we shouldn't have to worry about that unless I think you end up de de defining a serialized section. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a really good question. It's a thing you have you have to worry about, but I believe that uh, JSFX has solved that for you um, because it's being helpful. Mm -hmm. um... I, I personally never got the vibe that <laughs> they're trying to be helpful. <laughs> For me, it's it's it can be quite I mean, confusing. Having tried a few different environments, yeah. JSFX is a really it's a pretty good one. That's nice. That is good yeah. to hear. Um, okay. So that that cleared up a bunch for me. So yeah, so whenever we kind of run um, a JSFX, if there's a buffer in there or something that that should be just reset out when we when we instantiate a new um, version of our plugin. No, I mean, not only that, uh, every time that you stop and start, it should reset. And if it doesn't, you will hear something. And in that case, there is a simple function we can call. It comes with JSFX. It's uh, mem set for memory mm -hmm. set. And then you just say, I want to set the memory from position X to position Y. I want to fill this space with zeros. Mm -hmm most often. Mm -hmm. And then you just clear the memory explicitly in probably your init block or sometimes in this uh, slider block, depending on the nature of your slider. Mm. Very cool. Um, so what is next? So we have a few parameters defined. Yeah, do, you, so do you want me to go? Yeah. OK. Um, Okay, so what is next is you have to, this index that you have going on, you have to make sure that it's advancing. Mm -hmm. So let's advance the delay line index in the sample block. We can say delay line index plus equals one, which means uh, the sample block is going to run in a loop 
every time that we go around this loop, we are going to take the delay line index and forward it by one. But that's not all. We also have to check if we went over the delay size, right? The, the number 100, because in that case, we need to wrap around. And if you look at the source code for most plugins out there, they're going to do something smart and do both of this operation, the incrementation, and as well as this wrapping around in a single uh, line. Uh, and it's going to use this operation called modulo, which is uh, if you find code like this, it's the percent sign, mm -hmm. but it has nothing to do with percentages. It's just the operator looks like a percent mm -hmm. sign. And then it's going to take the reminder of the division by another number. Yeah, don't worry about any of this. It is maybe faster and it's definitely more common, but it's, to my understanding, not the most explicit and easy to understand way of writing this. So we are not gonna do that. I'm just mentioning this in case you find this in some other effect. Uh, that's how people usually write this. They are going to do everything in a single line. Mm -hmm using the modulo operator, but we're not. We're going to do it the simple way, which I find more explicit. Mm -hmm. So we can check delay line index equals equals 100. Mm -hmm. And you can do that on the next oh, line. Uh, we have to do that afterwards. Interesting. Yes. Uh, so what we are going to do is we are going to go from starting with zero when the effect or actually starting with minus one the, when the effect starts. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to go one, two, three, four, five, and we are going to hit our 100. But when we say that the delay line is 100 and that it starts at zero, it means that the index 100 does not exist. Mm -hmm. We stop at 99, right? That's the last index mm -hmm. that is valid for us. So what we're going to do is if the delay line is 100, we went over already. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. So we can say delay line index equals zero, meaning wrap around. Mm -hmm. um, let me know if I. I'm using anything, any any wrong bit of syntax here. So I guess with that in nope, mind, this is perfect. Uh, with that in mind, I guess we make this zero now that we call that a hundred, so that it's a hundred. No, 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 not uh, really, not really. Because think about when where the effect starts the first oh, time. Gosh. You say that the delay line index is minus one, and then the sample block runs, and then it increments zero. So, Minus one plus one is zero, and then you have your first valid index. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think it's worth saying it depends whether you're putting this at the before or after the code that uses it. Mm -hmm. So I personally um, end up putting this at the end of of the block, um, and then I I do set delay line index to zero at the start. And what that means is that like any time before or after this uh, code runs. The delay line index is a valid value. Mm -hmm. so That's a fair point. Yeah. So personally, I, I would I would set I would initialize it to zero, mm -hmm. um, in in the init section, um, and then that gives us a bit more, a bit more. It's slightly more foolproof, I think. Interesting. Because uh, you can't accidentally do something wrong if you put code before this section. Uh -huh. um, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I guess it's kind of like. Uh... The, the way I kind of uh, imagine it is like kind of a production line. And, and one way is to like bring in a sample, do all the stuff to it, send it to the end. And then in the end, be like, OK, now now clear out the line versus uh, Leandro's way is like bring in a line, do all the stuff. Now bring in the next line, do all the stuff. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so uh, I can give you my reason for my way. I'm not saying that it's better. I just want to explain why I do it this way. There is a reason to the method. Uh, the code that initializes things is closer to the code that maintains the delay line index, that updates the index to the next place. So when you're reading the code, usually you're going to go from top down, like you read in English. So it kind of tells a story Oh, these are the initialization things. These are the things that happen first. And then in the sample block, oh, this is all the maintenance that has to happen. So I know that I, I am maintaining the delay line in this way. This is the delay line size. And then it's all very explicit how the thing is being managed. And then I go ahead and use the sample. But you are right that in my way of doing things, if you write the code that uses the delay line index before the line where the cursor right is right now, 
you will try to use sample, uh, you will try to use position minus one in memory, which is not valid. And I suppose that JSFX is just going to say, okay, whatever, it's zero. Mm -hmm. but, and you're not going to have any problems really. But yeah, it is, a, it, it is a good point. Yeah, it's a matter of style. And my style, I admit, is uncommon. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want. You're driving cool. area. Um, well, I like not to redo things, so I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it as yeah. is. <laughs> Keep okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now, uh, I have a, a shortcut to not have to do the mathematics of going back a certain number of samples. So let's say that we always want to go back a hundred samples. So, it is not general because we cannot have a delay line that is bigger than the delay that we actually want. So it's kind of a hack, but it works for this first pass, and then we can improve on it. So if I, can, do, I think I think I know what you're about to say. So if I can point yeah. at my oh, diagram, yeah. uh, let me do know. the thing. Yes, cool. Um, yeah. So uh, what we're talking about, I, I think, is that if the well, you've got your current position and you're going back by a certain number of samples to read a previous value. If the number of samples you're delaying by is the same as the size of your buffer, then every time you go back, you'll wrap around and end up exactly where you started. So if your buffer is 100 samples long and you're delaying by 100 samples, then you end up, your delayed thing is exactly at the same point you're about to write to. This adds a slight complication because you don't want to overwrite the value and then try and read from it afterwards. So you have to do things in the right order. But if you read the delayed value first and then write its replacement, then you don't have to do this position arithmetic because you know it's going to wrap around exactly back because the delay time is equal to the size of the buffer. Uh, so I think that's the shortcut the Leander is talking yeah, about. Yeah, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible for the first pass. And then when we iterate, we can add the possibility of having a delay line that is bigger than the delay we actually care about, which may be advantageous if you're doing something like the delay size is something that the user has control over and you don't want to, things to click when you are uh, using the slider, then in that case, you may want to store more samples than you actually need, just in case the user is going to automate that parameter and change it, and then you will need those samples. So having a this this hack that I'm about to to carry out here is a hack. It makes things simpler if you know that your delay line will have that fixed size and you won't need to change it. And it's a good first try. Hmm. It's a good first attempt, I think. Um, keep talking for a second, because I thought, why don't I <laughs> real quick set up hotkeys for these uh, scenes so that I don't need to open um, OBS like a noob. Um, and tap. I think that worked. That probably didn't hey. work, but uh, let me check for the first time. Yes. Even if it does work, I'll have to check. So that was a waste of time. All right, go <laughs> on. <laughs> okay, so yes, we need to be careful about the order of the operations. If we try to write before we read, then we are going to lose the value that we care about. So let's first read. Um, go to a new line, and you can call this whatever you want. This is the delayed sample. So I guess delayed sample may be a good name for this. Mm -hmm. And the delayed sample is equal to the delay line mm -hmm. at, and when I say at, I mean the open square bracket mm -hmm. that weird syntax yep. we learned to access memory in Reaper. So the delay line is our base address. That's where the delay line lives in the big chunk of memory that we have to that we have available to use. And then the position is the delay line mm -hmm. index. Uh, whoopsie daisy, butterfingers. Um... Okay, and and then um, next we have to do the next bit of maintenance, which is to store the current sample in that position, mm -hmm. so that the next time we go around the loop, that sample will be there for us. So we need to say delay line at delay line index equals, mm -hmm. and we are only working with uh, the left channel, so SPL zero in that case. Mm -hmm. 
Um, bap, and then SPL zero. Cool. And now, there is something I want to do. I want you to save and I want to look at the variables on the right pane sure. because we should see the delay line uh, index. We should see it going around in a loop. Mm -hmm. That looks good. And the delay line variable itself stays at zero. That's our base address. That's not interesting. And then the delay size is always 100 as well. So that is pretty much a constant, not a variable really. Mm, I'm just going to so, make this then delay uh, size just so that we look cooler. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, that's a great. great point. Yeah. And then uh, this is a valid delay line. We are storing things in there. The problem is we are not doing anything with the delayed sample. So this effect is collecting all the data, but it's dropping the data on the floor. It's not really using it. But in fact, even with just what we have right now, we can see if the thing is sort of working because we have the delayed sample. And the delayed sample is always zero because no audio is going through the effect. But if you run some audio through there, we should see the delayed sample change. It should be mm -hmm. a, a number that is the, the, the sample from 100 samples ago. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to, whoops, I just deleted it, dumb. Um, what do we call it? Um, I just realized, whoa, where's my thing? Give me back my thing. Did I just lose everything that we wrote for Rails? No, that can't be. Just try, try searching for test, maybe. Uh, oh, test. Maybe I spelled diffuser weirdly. No. Um, it, it should be here. We definitely didn't lose it, hopefully. Hopefully not. Where the hell is... You can always just well, undo until you get it back. Oh, I guess. Yeah, I, uh, you, I told you to save, so we are yeah, good. Yeah, okay, there it is. And then, whoop, I did it again. Oh, oh. my God. Um, sorry, everybody. All right. But this is... That is not correct. No, this is the one. We just oh, didn't delete this okay. slider. I know what the issue is. Yeah, just remove the first line that is the description because right now the thing is listed under new effect. Uh, That's why we didn't okay. find it. Well, I'll just so you it. can call it diffuser test or you can remove the line and Reaper will pick up the file name mm -hmm. instead. Um, which is also acceptable. Fabulous. Um, so should we send See, it audio showed up to now it? on the pane. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, yeah, how about a, a, a sine wave or some white noise? Sure, um, I got a little thing here. I got a little 1K tone we can send through this. And here we go. We don't need to hear it. Oh, we don't need to hear. We need to look at the, the actual code yeah. of it. Yeah, uh, yep. Yeah. I mean, we know that the effect should not be heard. We are not changing SPL zero, mm -hmm. so we shouldn't hear anything. That sounds really short, so we might miss the point when it changes. Right. Um, Sorry, what were, what but... am I looking at, or what are we what are we looking for right now? The late sample, the first entry uh, on the right uh -huh. pane, the the late sample entry. When you run some audio through this, it should change. The value should change. Can you just, instead of trying to run this uh, tiny blip of sound, how about in the effects chain? You can mute this track. We don't need uh -huh. to hear it. But in the effects chain, just put uh, a white noise generator sure. or whatever. Yeah, there's one called test tone, which is useful. Cool. Uh, let's do that. I guess I okay. don't have oh, that. Tone, tone generator, tone sorry. Generator, yeah. It's called yeah. tone. You can use my tone generator. Cool. I'll use your tone generator. I, I should make this Thank a you. little. Uh, I should make this an action because I do this a lot, and I'll just make that um, mono as well. Whoopsie Daisy. Uh, limps. Okay, and yes, our delayed sample is indeed doing things. Yeah. So how about? Now we do something to this delay sample, just something super simple, just to make sure that the delay sample is actually working. We see numbers changing, but I would like to hear something. So how about we just replay the sample? 
something very simple. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you guess what we need to do to to make that happen? Um, we need to. Well, we got to say SPL zero equals delayed sample, but I'm wondering if in the middle we got to make it like wait a hundred minutes or wait some, some amount of no. time. So the delayed samples that we have, the delayed sample variable is the delayed value that we've read out of the buffer. Mm -hmm. So this is how we implement that delay. So yeah, you're right. Just SPL zero equals delayed sample mm -hmm. will delay the left channel by a hundred samples. Mm -hmm. And this will, this may be slightly harder to make sense of because we will hear now what is going to happen is we will hear this delayed sample, but I don't think it will be easy for us to tell that we got it right because we are just going to hear whatever audio is coming through with a hundred delays of sam yeah. um, a hundred samples of delay, not a hundred delays of samples, a <laughs> hundred samples of yeah. delay. Uh, so how about instead of saying SPL zero equals delayed sample, um, we mix SPL0 uh, with the delayed sample. Actually, I, I think that we can look at it directly if we use either either an oscilloscope, at which point we'll see that the tone doesn't line up between the two channels anymore. So you can, mm -hmm. I'd, 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 I'd try an oscilloscope. Cool. Um, sounds, um, sounds good. Oh yeah, that's a good point. We kind of have a reference because of SPL1. Yeah, but before we move on, Aria, I have to tell you, put the semicolon there. Oh, it's not really boy. necessary. It's the last statement in the block, but put yeah, it there. We, we got a whole drinking game. There you go. Um, where I, for every time I forget <laughs> to um, put the thing, put the correct syntax, um, which is weird. I'm such a stickler for punctuation when it comes to the old English. Um, okay, and then I gotta zoom on this thing a little bit. And no, I don't want to move. I want to zoom. Sorry. Do, 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 do. There we go. Yes, we can see, and I can pause this. We can zoom further, and see that we got a delay going. Because yeah, the, zoom in further, the blue and the red lines the don't match exactly, so that's the delay that we see. In fact, we, so, we see a cool moray more pattern. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. I think if you zoom in further, we will be able to see oh, the delay quite nicely. Whoop. Yeah. 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 So that's that's cool. That's our our delay working. Mm -hmm. Um, they started up aligned, and then we've delayed the left channel, which is presumably blue here. Mm -hmm. um, that's great. That nice. is awesome. Yeah, so I don't think that we need one delay line. I think that we need a bunch of delay lines. So do you want to jump into the, actually using the library for this now that we understand how it works? Because I suppose that the implementation in your library is going to be equivalent to, if not exactly the same as the code we wrote, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, you do you have a library for this um, as well? I, um, I don't have a library. Uh, okay. No, I was proposing to use yours. Sure. Um, yeah. Thank you, Reaper blog. Um, That's very nice to hear. Um, yeah. So wh where where do I go to download the, the library? I'm assuming I gotta download it. I assume it's already in Repack. Yeah, but it might not be. Um... Okay, so if you go to the directory that uh, that this uh -huh. effect is in, um, um, I I do have I'd, some I'd... stuff there. Uh, come on, Finder! Don't embarrass me in front of my friends. Sometimes I find it just doesn't. Oh, oh! May may I interject? But can I ask you something? Uh, we we are writing audio effects and I told you mute the track we just need to see the wave but in fact why don't we just hear the effect it could be fun so instead of maybe a sine wave which would be kind of hard to tell that it has been delayed uh, how about we put some audio through this and uh, make the delay a little uh, maybe like one second and then we clap and then we hear mm -hmm. the clap one second later uh, yeah because 100 samples is about 
two milliseconds, yeah. I think. Uh, which, yeah, yeah, but now that we have that variable, it's really mm. easy for us to change the size of this block. So yeah. we can go with a longer number, uh, a bigger number, and it will be a longer delay line, and we can actually hear the effect. Uh, yeah, I think we all know what it sounds mm. like, but it would be uh, entertaining to actually hear an audio effect in this stream in which we write sure. audio effects. Sure. Um, so, Garant, I'm in the place where where our um, thing is, a diffuser test right here, and, and this is the directory. All right, so I've sent you a link to uh, this is, I mean, you could pull it out from your file system, actually. It's my stuff's there. Oh, cool. Um, but like, uh, just anywhere in my Oh, there it JSFX. is, yeah, delay JSFA. Uh -huh. Oh, there cool. we are. Uh, no, that's not mine. That's oh, someone okay. else's. Um, I can download is... yours real, yeah. real quick then. Uh, yeah. Um, and... So if you just click raw at the top. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh yeah. And then you can uh, just save okay. that somewhere. In fact, if you you need to save that in the same directory right. as the uh, um, as um, the I didn't know about this way because I mean I've only I've only used GitHub to get people's um, like get that link for for Reapack. So so this is yeah, actually yeah. great for me. Um, we need to go to effects, and it's just here. Uh, delay utils JS effects. Yeah. And wait, the format doesn't need to be a web archive, right? right? Oh goodness yeah, what, me! What have I done? That's super um, weird. <laughs> I would go with just page source. With I think Safari uh, okay. will behave. Cool, cool. It says dot web Extends. archive. That is that's not great. Oh, just to delete um, that. What if yeah. I just what if I just copy all the text and put them in a in an old text editor? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid I haven't actually um, packaged this up uh, in a way that's uh, as easy to share as I have for the UI library, um, because I don't know if anyone else has been using this. Um, but yeah, I, I should probably do that. I should uh, make this so that other people don't have <laughs> to do this. Um, um, w yeah. Is it is it possible to um, download? Not now. I forgot what we call it, but I think it's right here. Um, delay utils. Yeah, delay utils. Um, something something. Oh, where did I put it? Uh, so yeah. delay um, utils dot jsfx is it dot ink or dash ink dash dash ink so that's a special extension which means that Reaper knows it's not an effect and won't list it in your mm -hmm. effects list uh, so this is what you use for for libraries. Uh. Anyway. Aria, you will have to cancel this uh, uh -huh. menu right now because <laughs> the, the file is in rich text mode. So cancel uh -huh. this and then go to yes. format and make, make plain, plain text. text. Plain Jane text. Yes, please. And, and now you can save it. Um, oh, and I got to write the whole thing again. Thanks, Obama. JSFX dash ink. Like this, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. and I gotta go back to um, the same spot. Oh, I am in the same spot. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, I think it's as the .txt extension. Maybe. Um, I'll oh, no. I'll double check that uh, real quick over here. <laughs> there was a weird way of downloading a file. <laughs> uh, yeah, I. I didn't expect it to be that complicated. Yeah, it's also because of uh, Mac just not letting you have like a bunch of code. That looks correct to me. All That's right. Cool. Mm -hmm. so, All right. Yeah. Uh, I am seeing something that maybe you're seeing is that the icon is different. But should we should we just try and and import it? Do I need to kind of reinstantiate slash scan anything again or? No, um, uh, Reaper just picks everything up. What I do want to do is just take a peek at the library and try to find the place where we have code that looks like ours. Oh sure. um, yeah, sure. Um, I can I can pull that up or it's right here. 
And I bring this up because that's how I learn stuff. <laughs> For instance, there is a comment there that says should not use. That's Brilliant. important to know. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the, the the top uh, of the of the mm -hmm. library, um, if you scroll up, uh, there's uh, this. Oh my God! What have I done? Um, yeah. Okay. So. Uh, a bit below that delay uh -huh. setup. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, this. What is wrong? This uh, library does interpolated fractional delays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that's not what we need. Um, so this is massively more complicated than we uh, like. I mean, it's, it's fine to use, but to read, uh, mm. it's not actually. <laughs> it's not really. Uh, the the simplest um, example. I'm always just. Um, uh, I'm always, you know, you just looked at this code for a second and you were like, "Oh my god!" And I always thought that's like in films when the hackers go, "My god!" and they read the whole code. But it, so there are people who actually like just at a glance, they're like, "Something is wrong here." That is really interesting to me. So how about this exercise? We have the author of the code in the room. How about I try to interpret the code and I try to read and make sense oh, of it, God. and then we can see the process of how this works because that's how I learn all my stuff, and it is <laughs> interesting to see the process of reading sure. this. So first of all, I see that it's only the init block, and because as far as I understand, if you want to do a library, you only need the init block. All the other blocks will be ignored anyway. You can only see functions from other places. Uh, is that wrong? Yeah, sorry, I was muted. Uh, yeah, um, other blocks can be defined, I believe, but uh, they're just not very useful. So yeah. Okay. So then I see a function called sync, and that's a mathematics thing, but I don't think it's necessary for our case. So uh, I can just skip over that. And then there is the delay configuration, which is uh, kind of interesting because uh, we want to configure a delay line. And then there is this key stuff and a value stuff, and I don't know what that is about, so I would just skip over that and go to the lay setup. And then I see something that I recognize, free mem. Mm -hmm. uh, that stands for free memory, I suppose, which is somewhere in our big buffer where we can store stuff, we need to say where we want to have our base address, where we have some chunk of free memory that we get to use. So then this delay function, this delay setup function, receives a base address and a max delay samples. I also recognize that we did something very similar to this. We called free man delay, in, yeah. delay line, and we, we called max delay samples delay size or whatever, mm -hmm. but I see a relationship. And then uh, the body I don't need to understand. That's how delay setup works. I don't care about it. I know that I more or less understand how it would be used. And then we go to delay need. That is awesome because it receives the same parameters, but it seems higher level. It seems like the kind of thing that I would call from my code. So delay setup is probably more like an implementation detail, while delay init is the function that I would call as the user of this library. <laughs> so, so I understand that the organization here is from the more implementation details to the higher level things that we actually care about as users of the mm -hmm. library, which I guess is a necessity when you're writing user-defined functions in JS effects because you can only call functions that were defined before and not later. So that's a tendency of some low-level languages like JS effects and C and C++ uh, where you will find the more interesting things further below and I mentioned how in my JS effects, I try to write it the other way around so that the more interesting things kind of happen first and it reads more like English. But because of the way that the functions work in JS effects, you are kind of forced your hand into writing it in this way where uh, they need function, which I think is going to be the way you use the library, comes later. Mm. Um, so, and then there are uh, things like delay size. And we had, um, we kind of used the max delay samples in the init, so I don't know what that is about. I would go to delay input. That's a good one. It takes a sample. 
So that's how you write something to the delay line, I suppose. And I even see that the first line of the implementation reads like this index plus equals one, which I guess index is our like pointer in the big chunk of the delay line. So I can see it advancing. And then there is the check, is the index bigger than the buffer length? And then it says index equals zero. That is awesome. We wrote code exactly like that. And then we also wrote the code that reads like buffer at a certain index equals sample to store the sample in there. And there is some extra stuff that we don't need to understand, like that this dot, I don't need to care about this for now. Uh, but the spirit of the code, we can kind of read. It's not like the matrix, mm -hmm. right? Do you agree? Um, well, yeah, like, like, um, yeah, it's definitely not like an overwhelming amount of code. Um, other than like over here, there's some stuff um, where, yeah, I just know from the name black man window, that is something that, yeah, I've seen in, in things far beyond my understanding, like a, like a spectrograph or a, or not a spectrograph, a, a spectrograph. Yes. Um, yeah. So uh, this is, of course, about the inter-sample stuff. So if you are storing a hundred samples, but you really are interested in knowing what is sample 35.7, you can do that with this uh, interpolation thing. So it's going to interpolate the two samples that it has, uh, and then it will find the sample mm -hmm. in the middle. So it will take sample 35, 36, and interpolate and give me an approximation of sample 35.7. But we don't need to understand the implementation of this not right away in order to be able to use the library, especially because we are not interested in uh, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But then there is this delay output. So I suppose that's how you take something out of the delay line. So we know that delay input is how you store. Delay output is probably how you retrieve stuff from there. And I even see that the first line of the implementation reads like index is a certain index minus something. So that is the thing that we did not implement actually that goes further to the past and try to get a sample from the past. We didn't implement this because we said that the, the only option you have to get a sample out of the delay line is to get a sample from uh, max delay samples ago. Mm -hmm. So we did not really implement this, but now I know that this delay out output linear takes the samples argument. That is how many samples ago am I interested in? And then it's gonna return um, something. I suppose it's gonna return this sample from samples ago. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much all I need to actually use the library. I need to initialize the delay line with delay in it. I need to store stuff in the delay line and I need to get stuff back. And there are two flavors, delay line, uh, delay output linear one and delay output mm -hmm. linear. I don't, know. I don't know. I would probably go yeah. with delay li output linear one because it probably came later. <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah. So firstly, I've got to say uh, I'm somewhat regretting posting this code <laughs> now because I was not expecting this to be shared. And really, if you're looking at a piece of code like this and you're thinking, how do I use this library? Um, what you should actually do is go and poke whoever wrote it and be like, document your code. Mm. We shouldn't be having to figure this out by hand. Um, I was not expecting this to be uh, publicly visible and certainly not to be uh, <laughs> dissected live. Um, so I, I apologize for the state of this along with comments saying do not use um so yeah uh i'm i'm not not feeling so hot about my uh my coding skills right this second um but yeah like ideally you shouldn't have to do this um but that is correct um yeah so you use uh delay setup to set up a delay buffer and you tell it where the memory is and then it gives you the next bit of memory that it hasn't used um and then you uh, give it an input sample and then pull an output sample with linear one would be a nice straightforward way to do mm. that. Um, I mean, don't feel bad. Here, yeah, man. don't feel <laughs> this bad. This is very Please. educational too because um, I always say like when it comes to mixing, um, I'm like you know like don't listen to the mix of 
Don't listen to like a queen mix and be like, oh, it's like I want to hear Queen's stems or not even stems. I want to hear the multi tracks that were recorded that still has like the noise in it from when the drummer like like was was talking, you know, like I want I want to go like deep down. And that's kind of how I learned. So this is actually really appreciated. And I mean, to my eyes, this looks like mind bending code that I see like nothing wrong with. So. Uh. <laughs> and there is something yeah. interesting to be said about this, mm. which is first, even if the library is documented, I think it's there is still value in going to the code and s just learning from it and recognizing the parts that make sense. But also, when someone is releasing something for free as open source, uh, it is common for other people to go poke at them and say, oh, you should document this, or uh, this is slow, or your code is dumb, or whatever. But th it is important to understand that there is only so much you can ask from people. So That's a really good point, yeah. Yeah, so I personally, I would Thank try. You. So here's what I, I would do in that case. I would not poke at the person and say, you should document your code. I would probably if I really see value in that, and it's something I have done in the past, I would learn from it by doing the thing we are doing together here. And then I would propose, oh, I really like what you did here. And I think that if you have this kind of documentation, it would help other people. Here is a contribution. And I would send them at least a sketch because there is this, it can be easy to just ask for more and more and more. Yeah. And on the other side of the, the, the thing, where I get asked to do more and more and more, I've, there is a feeling of burnout. And there is a feeling of, really, I put 15 hours into writing this, and now you want me to put another 20 hours into documenting this, and you feel entitled mm -hmm. that I must do this for you? I I can, I may, but I must not. Yeah. I mean, I already did something. I already contributed with mm -hmm. something. So, yeah, and actually, now that I said all of this, uh, I think there is some more interesting code right below the fold here. Can you scroll down? I think there is another function that it may be even more interesting to use. Yeah, uh, this delay output mm -hmm. samples. Uh, maybe that's the one we want to use instead of using the linear one. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's true. Yeah. Um, so and then to load yeah. this library, I have to come here and. Um, I don't remember if it's at the init block or even before I got to go load. Correct. Yeah, that's I think it's include. include. Is it include? Um, I just learned this from your uh, from your UI. Oh, lib. sorry. No, import. import. Yeah. Um, it's import. Import. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Delay. If I can just uh, say again to Leandro, thank you a lot for saying that um, because I, I did flippantly say that you know people should document their code um and if it's something that you're deliberately aiming at beginners then i think yeah it should be you know a good resource for beginners should be clearly documented and this is something that i've pulled out from internal documentation but yeah the burnout from open source stuff is real uh if, when we downloaded this like you can see that the last time this was modified was june 2019 mm -hmm. And between June 2019, um, in fact, pretty much between early, you know, 2019 and about, I don't know, less than a year ago, I didn't log into GitHub. Mm -hmm. I, I had absolute open source burnout and I have a pretty, a pretty popular, uh, library, which, uh, a JavaScript JSON schema thing, which, um, I just, I, you know, had a full-time job. I had no spare energy and it just like completely overwhelmed me and I didn't sign into GitHub for over a year. Um, and yeah, so thank you for just like respecting the time because I, I was flippant there and you're absolutely right that like, uh, don't be demanding, but be helpful. And I really appreciate mm -hmm. that. Yeah, and by the way, the documentation for your UI library is, is, is awesome. Yeah, like example <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. setting, that? Like that is the way yeah. to go. Yeah. Um, I I had actually this question and I left it out just because I thought like pe people are here to uh, to see code, to see hard code, but um, I might as well 
because because something that I think is like if you look at kind of uh, you know I joined Reaper at I think it was like five point eight. Um, so I came in and I explored a bunch of things and I was like, wow, Lucasana, amazing stuff. Um, wow, Zenakius, amazing stuff. And actually, like lots of those people, lots of those really gifted coders, like were either sniped or it seems like they're not active anymore. And then other people like um, MPL, who makes some of my favorite scripts ever, um, they were like, I just cannot do this just based on donation anymore. Um, I have to charge. And now he mm -hmm. charges... 30 bucks for, for having V2 right. of his scripts. And otherwise you can stay on V1 and that's free and that's forever. Um, yeah. That's interesting. And uh, w which I think is totally fair for somebody to expect um, something. And I saw that you don't have a donation page uh, yourself, uh, Garen. So if, if you do have something that I just did, that just didn't show up in my, uh, in my thing that, uh, that people can like help I, yeah, let us know. I did till recently, actually, um, when I was doing this open source stuff, and that was really great. And it was really, you know, when someone just like popped five quid my way, it was really uh, motivating and made me feel really appreciated. Um, I removed it because I'm now, I've got mm. the business. <laughs> and so I'm actually getting money from from that. And it felt a bit kind of weird to be asking for for donations at the same time because I'm actually, you know, I've mm -hmm, I've made nice. it, you know. Um uh so uh but I'm also not very much on on the Reaper forums as much mm -hmm. as I used to be. Um but I, I still try and pop in occasionally. Uh, mm -hmm. when you were yeah. active, did you feel supported? Like maybe not, you know, maybe it's not like super wide, but did you feel like a small community is really like, yeah, dude, like you're the best, yeah? Yeah. It was really great. Yeah, the, the Reaper forums were a, a great place. And I, I look back on the time when I was more active and was like, I really want that again. Maybe I should go back. Um, and so I do I do, uh, pop back and just like, uh, just see what's happening because it's a, it's a great that place. Nice. Yeah. Um, that's very cool. Um, good to hear that. Because, um, yeah, I mean, like, I think as a community, if we don't make like better efforts to support people who who do like open source coding, they either will get sniped or they they'll just stop. They get burnt out, um, and that is completely fair enough. Because you know, I make these tutorials and it takes me a long time. But if somebody's like, "Hey, here's some money, and you gotta work for us now," I'll be like, "Yes, please," because I want to also like get a dog, and dogs <laughs> cost money, you know. Yeah. As much as I love this, this is like oh. my, yeah, I love doing these tutorials and it's improved my life. So anywho, um, I just started a new effect just because like that little few lines of code that we wrote, just what, might as well keep it. Um, so I just started a new thing and I imported this and now to recall it, I go, what do I do now? <laughs> okay. So the way that, um, uh, firstly, a personal thing that I like to do, but it's not universal, is I have a, a a variable called free mem or something else which just keeps track of in 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 it the uh, the latest or the the earliest piece of memory which you haven't used mm -hmm. yet. Um, so free mem is zero because you mm -hmm. start with zero. Um, is is what I like to do. Um, and then yeah, so on on a new line, the way that uh, objects and well pseudo objects they're not really objects in in jsfx work is with this dot mm -hmm. syntax so you create a variable name mm -hmm. uh so on your new line say call it i don't know delay mm -hmm. one or whatever um and then you do mm -hmm. dot and then the function name that you want it to call and what it will call is you remember there was that this which we kind of uh leandro uh skimmed over um that gets substituted with delay mm -hmm. one. So we end up, we'll see when when with this when this actually runs that we'll have, um, well, I don't know if it's visible, but we'll have these variables called like delay one dot buffer, delay one dot index. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so yeah, I think it was called uh, delay underscore uh, uh -huh. init. Delay underscore init. Um, uh, and then the maximum number of samples that we want uh, to delay. So let's say, I oh, know, sample uh -huh. rate, S rate. Uh, cool. Um, I guess I will go and 
Uh, sure, sure. We we used to define this as a variable, um, but I guess not necessary to do. Uh, and then close brackets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't remember how case sensitivity works, whether S should be capitalized or not. In I think it's uh, case it's sensitive. Just because it weird. turned red, I was like, cool. But I guess, yeah, it's not case sensitive. Yeah. Um, and this init function actually returns you the new free mem. So you should do free mem equals at the beginning of this line. Um, yeah, so that is that has now set up the delay line buffer and has returned you the earliest point that it's now not using. So it's reserved a section of memory for itself. Mm -hmm. uh, can, I, can a, I interject? Oh, yeah. I, I want to explain a little bit about this uh, pseudo objects because it's not something that we talked about before. So can I give a quick primer on that? Go on. Sure. Yeah. So Aria, can you please open the library that we had open in just uh, no text, text edit? edit. You could just save this. Oh, first. sure. Um, we'll do, we'll do. Um, this is here. I don't know what this is, but I'm just going to get out of this and I'm going to save this and I'm going to show this. Yes. Oh, uh, I actually want to see the code that we are writing along oh, with this on the same screen. Possible to do. Here we go. Yeah. And I want you to scroll to where the lay in it is defined. Absolutely possible to do. Yes. There we go. So um, we talked about functions before, how you can use the functions that come with Reaper, but you can also define your own. And that's what we did in, I guess, uh, two episodes ago. Um, and what we have right now is another function call. The, the cursor on the code that we are writing is a function call, but it's a function call in disguise. There is a wrinkle to how it works. So you can imagine uh, a function that would have been defined like this. On the right, it would read function, delay input, open parens, and then the first argument would be called mm -hmm. this. And then the second argument would be called mm -hmm. SPL. And then to call the function, we would call delay init, and then mm -hmm. something, some, some variable to be the this, and then uh, the sample rate, which is SPL mm -hmm. on the right. Does that yeah. make sense? Like the way we did it before. So it with, would be with a, our EQ function. Yes, it would be a simple function call. It would be a simple function call with two arguments. Now, this is more or less what is happening here. This pseudo objects. They are essentially function calls, but there is a bit of magic. The magic goes like this. The first argument, the one that we call mm -hmm. this, it does not appear as a first argument. It appears to the left-hand side of the dot. OK, it's just a function call with a special syntax where the first argument is on the left. But there's a reason why we have this special, special syntax, and that is this delay line, uh, sorry, this delay one variable becomes this special variable that you can attach more variables to, and it's going to remember the value. So you can think of this as like you have like a, a, a variable, a regular variable, the kind of variables that we have been writing so far. They're like one place where you can store a value. This special kind of variable, like delay one is a special kind of variable. It is uh, some, some box with divisions where you can store multiple values and you can recall them by name, which is not the same as uh, the big chunk of memory that we have to work with because that big chunk of memory is just one chunk of memory that we have to index with a number. That's not the same. We have a box of which is our variable, our pseudo object, and you have these divisions in there, but it's a fixed amount and you have to retrieve by name, not mm -hmm. by number. And when we see things in the code on the right, like this dot index, it is the this, what is the this? It's delay one. Uh, the dot index is one name of one of the pieces that we are storing in that bigger place, that bigger variable. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so that this is, OK, cool. I was like, what is this this action? Yeah, this is a special name 
when you're defining a function, you always have access to this. And then if you're using this, then you should call the function. It's a special function because you should call the function with the special syntax that we see on the mm -hmm. left, where you have the first argument. It's not really an argument. It appears on the left of the, of the dot. And uh, you may have heard or you may not have heard this term being there is a name for this kind of thing, object-oriented right. programming. And the things like delay one are your objects. An object is just this special variable that you can have subdivisions mm -hmm. of. You can, you can reason about it along those lines. The explanation is not 100% precise if you get into the depths of programming language theory, but it's a working definition that we can cool. proceed with. End of, inter end of interjection. Okay. Yeah, nice, thank you. That's cool. Uh, so, Garant, what's next for us? Well, now we should be able to write the uh, the sample mm -hmm. section, which actually uh, inputs and outputs uh, these mm -hmm. delayed values. Uh, yeah, so uh, that uh, delay input function is what mm -hmm. we're going to use. Uh, so we're going to use it as a well, we're going to use it as a, a method on the object. So we're going to do delay oh, okay. one dot because it's got that this mm -hmm, inside mm -hmm. it. Uh, well, well. Um, and then let's hand in SPL zero mm -hmm. cool. for the left channel. And do we need, need to give it a variable name or not necessarily? Uh, no, because that's uh, we're we're just writing into mm -hmm. the buffer. We're not reading anything out. That's we're going to get the value out of the next. Uh, mm -hmm. on the next line. Um, so we can just do uh, SPL0 equals. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I think we're going to use that uh, delay output samples, which Leandro uh, dug out from my <laughs> embarrassingly disorganized code. Uh, that is this one. And delay yeah. output yeah. So samples. That's, Yeah, and then this, I mean, we could say 100 or we could say something else. Um, Let's say 100. Yeah, S rate or mm -hmm. something, whatever. Um, that's So this is now the number of samples that we want to delay by. Mm -hmm. So I guess let's make it something that we can actually hear. So um, why don't we, yeah, why don't we go S rate and that'll be a one second delay, correct? Mm -hmm. It will, yes, yeah. Because this delay can be up to the size of the mm -hmm. buffer. Mm-hmm. Um, although actually, we as as uh, Leandro mentioned, I think it might be possible that we've done that. It needs to be the other way around. Um, let's do S rate times okay. 0.5. So that's going to be half a cool. second of delay. Um, then that's all nice and organized, and we can. At this point, we can happily close <laughs> the, uh, the message like, code. Get rid of that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Free me, please. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Here we are. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, let's have a look at that in the scope or give cool. it a listen or whatever. Um, see what happens. No, you, you have to put oh the semicolon God. first. I'll not oh, let you. Oh, yes. And also, when we save, um, ah, delay in it. Yeah. Sorry, yes, it's given us a useful an error message. Um. So it said that a delay in it needs two arguments. When you when you save at the bottom of the window, you'll get that error message again. So hit hit save again. Um, ah, so the first argument is, I believe, free mem. So it should be free mem. Oh no, we're gonna have to open it again. Um, it's free mem comma s rate. Something's funny is happening to Arya's uh, microphone, yeah. I think. Ah. Yeah. yeah. Uh, while Arya is figuring out his setup, um, I have a question for you. Did you ever consider writing a library for memory allocation so you wouldn't have to be explicit about pre-mem? 
and then it could your memory allocator could integrate with the rest of your libraries like the delay library it could but then it means that uh, it's less compatible with other libraries um so i don't want to assume that my libraries are the only ones that people are going to use so people might like pretty commonly uh will use my ui library or i'll just um we can't hear you yeah um so uh yeah so if people are already using the memory buffer for their own purposes uh then if you don't know about that then the memory allocation library that you write could conflict with something else they're using so i thought this was like maximally friendly for using a mis mishmash of different libraries yeah i guess uh, it will be one of those leaky abstractions in this case yes yeah i didn't i didn't want to end up um with with too much of that uh and again this is one of those things where um by the time you're writing memory allocation stuff like okay you allocate it but like do you need to free it afterwards like are you dynamically changing how memory is used uh at runtime and you know and at that point you're kind of uh i feel again you're you're bumping up against the limits of what jsfx is really meant for and although i have stretched it beyond what is is uh reasonable and and polite it's uh at some point you do uh have to move on to um yeah a better a, a more powerful language so mm -hmm. not clear whether the live the live stream can hear us or whether we're just chatting uh, for each other right now from but, uh, what i saw on the meters on uh arias obs i think that we are still streaming and i think that the stream can um, hear us i am not sure but in any case i think the conversation is interesting yeah mm. <laughs> and uh, i i have a, actually a follow-up question to this which is how early or how late in the process did you decide to extract libraries because something like the ui and the delay line are super sophisticated did you use an effect and you had some ui hard coded and then you had more components and eventually you extracted the thing um yeah so i'd been doing jsfx stuff for a few years but kind of not very intensely and then when i had this time off when i left a job i yeah i i picked a project so big that I knew and used its own UI framework. And once I realized that, it was just like going to be a nightmare to, to keep it separate. Um, so to, to keep it together. So I had to split it off into the same thing. Um, but at that point, you know, it didn't have all the documentation that that came years afterwards when I'd already written like six effects with this UI library and decided that maybe other people could benefit as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, are you, are we back, yeah, are you? I lost a little chunk of what y'all were saying. I think as soon as I saved this, I don't know if it was related, but as soon as I saved this, it got like a little bit crushy of the audio in my in my ears, and then it went away. And then I, I, you know, bypassed it, and and we're back. It, it took a while after I bypassed it for us to be back, so I don't know what happened. Um, I I checked to see if my like master track isn't automatically muting it, but in any event where I'm hearing your voices from is separate from that, but I think the, the stream never actually lost um, anything. I think I just lost people. All right. Okay, so where we were is that the delay init method needs mm -hmm. two arguments. So it should be the first one is free mem and the second one is the, oh, the length, I believe. Cool, cool. Um, that's one. Um, and then, so so correct me if I'm wrong. I'm probably wrong. If I now, um, if I have two delays, can I now just on on the next line go like uh, the so the next buffer that I want is going to be like free mem two, and then I'll go delay two, delay in it, or no, we initialize one time and we give it that amount of buffer. So uh, free mem starts at zero, and it's now been updated 
uh, by the next line. So we can initialize delay two, but with the same free mem, because that means they'll just sit next to each other mm -hmm. in the buffer. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Um, it's interesting that it's 48,261. That is interesting. Uh, the sample rate is like a little bigger than than 48K. Amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, interesting. Yeah. You need some more things. You don't need to store only the samples. You probably need some auxiliary data. That's uh, stored separately. Um, mm -hmm. In in objects, uh, I think it's probably more likely that I uh, have because I was doing fractional interpolation and that kind of stuff, which we're not doing. So that's probably mm -hmm. to do with that. Um, oh, and by the way, I I want to mention that if you want to learn more about this strategy of having this free mem variable, uh, there is a video of mine. Uh, you cannot hear me. Uh... No, I can hear I can you. Hear yeah, you. I think everybody hears you. I can, I can oh, hear okay, you. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, there was a message on the Skype chat saying we can we can't hear you, but that's, oh, that's probably be, that's from, from a, a minute ago. Yeah. In any case, yeah. If you want to learn more about this strategy of having a free mem variable and then incrementing it, uh, I have a video in my channel in which I describe how I implemented the auto mixer, one effect that I wrote. And in there, I use this exact strategy for allocating memory, and I explain in lo a lot of detail how it works. And it's not encapsulated in a library, and it's not encapsulated in a function, or in this case, a pseudo object, mm. uh, sorry, a pseudo method call. Um, it is explicit, so I do all the arithmetic with the free memory in front of you and explain how it works. So if you want to get uh, deeper into how the allocation of the memory works. It's not rocket science, but I explain it in more detail cool. in that video. Sounds good. Um, I want to learn everything. Uh, I, I'm actually going to probably not take like film jobs in September and, and just kind of get into code a little bit. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I can. I'll, I'll, it'll probably hurt me financially to a, to a huge degree, but whatever. What are you going to do? So we should be able to see whether this effect right now is mm -hmm. working. Uh, right. Yes, because, uh, yeah, we don't. Um, so I guess I'll save it. And this time, I still hear everybody, so that's nice. Um, but as somebody in the chat is asking about his background in coding. I actually did write like a little bio of Garant that's that's in the description, but also, um, Garant, do you want to... We, we talked about it a little bit at the beginning, um, but yeah, if, if you have anything to add. Yeah, I'm, I don't really know what to say. I uh, got started sort of learning at home from my dad and then... Um, yeah, uh, sort of learned Python, or I think PHP, and then Python. Um, and yeah, after you've learned like three languages, they all start to blur together. Um, so you can sort of pick up Java by just like Google. Um, everything except Haskell is roughly the same shape. Um, that's a that's awful generalization. Don't don't <laughs> at me. Um, and yeah, so mostly self-taught. Um, I got a really good kickstart from my dad. And yeah, from there, it's just like uh, just writing lots of code. I <laughs> don't, um, don't really know what to, what to go from there. I kind of I fell into programming as a career when I graduated and didn't want to be a um, maths researcher or decided against teaching, um, tempting mm -hmm. that was. Uh, yeah, definitely check the early part of the stream if you missed, because we, we, we did spend a good 50 minutes kind of chatting to Garant, and um, yeah, hopefully your questions will be answered. Somebody says, uh, Garant, your effects are next level. I agree. Um, yeah. It's, Thank you. It's like, I, I very naively just kind of overlooked JSFX in my early days of Reaper, and, and yours were something where I was like, yeah, like, Stop relying on your eyes and actually understand that this stuff is awesome. And then you can write your own stuff. Forget about it. So, uh, yeah, you really kind of pushed me towards looking under the hood. And uh, I really appreciate that. 
So one of the one of the effects that I have uh, is bad mm, connection, and uh, the the core idea there is very simple, which is that it has like a an on and off state with two different gain values, and it's just sort of randomly flipping between mm. the two. Uh, and somewhere like in in my Dropbox, I have the first that was the first JSFX I ever wrote before all the UI before all this other stuff, um, and it was about. 12 lines long and you know that was it it was just like uh you had an idea of like something you just wanted to do you made mm. it work and that's why i really loved jsfx and then it sort of that started the journey and then yeah getting the effect and the feedback and the support from the community is kind of actually what uh, pretty essential to have uh, pushed me into actually doing audio development professionally now uh, because i didn't really have a handle on it. Like I, I was, I was doing. I ended up doing uh, mobile app development. I did Android and iOS, and did a bit of mm -hmm. web development. Did some embedded development. Worked at ARM for a bit in research. Um, did IoT stuff, and then was doing uh, embedded camera stuff cool. for for Amazon. Um, but yeah, like finally going into audio now is. Uh, uh, a large part due to the the JSFX stuff, which has been very nicely received by the yeah. community, and I um, appreciate it. I'm using I'm using Bad Connection and Hammer and Core together to do sound design for this like AI robot running a spaceship in this film I'm working on. Um, I'll, I'll share with you the results oh, nice. as soon as I like I'm allowed to. I'll, I'll share it with everybody. Uh, but yeah, it's just really nice. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really cool to just get to work. It's really nice to hear people using my effects, and I I liked your droplets Thank video you. as well. Um, because, like, you, I mean, one of the great things about seeing other people use it, as opposed to just you in this void, um, is that they do things you didn't mm -hmm. think of. Uh, so I had never used droplets with mm -hmm. drums before, and then you just casually made this like very interesting offbeat ambience drum stuff using droplets and it blew me away it was really cool to see uh you know sort of creativity in a way that i hadn't you know the designer of the effect hadn't hadn't seen that coming and i really that's really fun uh, yeah um i also then started thinking well i can also design ambiences for this so i can put a lot of small samples of crowd noises and, and honking horns and stuff like that. And then I just literally make a MIDI oh. um, file that is every note. And and that just goes and it randomly kind of generates upon <laughs> a bed, like various kind of sounds of like beep beep and then, and then just a bunch of city sounds and stuff. Um, I thought that would be a good one. I, I have to say this again. You have the best it job. Is uh, it is fun. If it, if it paid like... 30% better. I, I would love that. Um, but <laughs> honestly, yeah, like couldn't ask for a better thing. Because yeah, like, in terms of the hours I put in, it's like my entire the rest of my life is on hold. But yes, love it. I really enjoy doing it. Um, just got to kind of balance it against like taking care of my health and, and some such things. Um, yes, Pablo says, Pablo also, yeah, a lot of, a lot of compliments in the chat for you, uh, Garrett, and for your awesome effects is the bulk. And I second all the compliments. Thank you very much. It's a big compliment for me as well. Um, so, so, okay. So what is next? Oh, we were going to hear it and I put it in here and we got, a. yes, I guess I can pause this to see I don't I, I see when we're playing sometimes a little bit of the delay is poking out yeah no no what? no that's a glitch on the visualization oh, I suppose yeah I, I wrote this you have to remember I wrote this oscill the, this mm -hmm. oscilloscope <laughs> actually what's happening is that we're delaying by it's working but we're delaying by exactly half a second uh -huh. uh, and I believe that that lines up True. exactly uh, with the um, with the, the mm -hmm. wavelength. So I'm just so gonna make a tone that is um, that is a like 999 um, hertz or something like that. So the yeah yeah that'll or do. I guess a hopefully. prime yeah. number or change the delay. 
like sample rates times 0.25 something oh um, yeah sure oh we, didn't we already do that we did sample rate times 0.5 just oh i guess time it right from I, i'm gonna just just because this is handier um i'm just gonna do that real real yeah, quick like uh 731 i believe is a prime number but uh somebody can fact check me on that also, you're missing out. You're not using my tone oh, generator there. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to be. The tones you are going to get will not be as high quality, mm -hmm. I must say. Uh, yeah, probably. Whoa. What just happened now? Um, there are some interesting things happening in my ear. Okay, so I guess we have. Uh, yeah, we are. it's working. We can see and I can pause this. Ooh. And I can zoom, or I guess zoom horizontally. No, we're max zoomed in, but ooh, I like these little nice patterns. Anybody want to buy a pair of socks with this pattern on it? Let me know. <laughs> uh, type in a different number, a, low, a higher number in the um, text box. In which text box are we looking at? Oh, uh, oh, there it is. So you type in yeah. a different number. Um, but we can see, yeah, we can see that we are delaying the sample. That's for sure. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't know how long we wanted to go with this stream. Um, so I think maybe making a whole diffuser was uh, a little bit bold <laughs> as a goal, but. Um... Uh, yeah, yeah, possibly. Um, I mean, I'll go, I'll go until, um, until everybody says, let's stop. Um, so yeah, so y'all let me know when you need to go or when you jo are just tired. Well, there, there is one thing that we must do. If we are doing an audio effect, we okay. need to hear the thing. I know that we know what it sounds like. Sure. Let's hear. Let's sure. hear the thing. What's the funny uh, not hearing it? Sure. Should, should I use a sound that is more than a sine wave? Something some yeah do you have something with rhythm in it like a, cool. a drum loop or something um, i'll let me just grab a random drum loop from somewhere i don't really work with samples but i recently did get some stuff uh how can we have the, uh, cats? the crazy cats you want sure uh, by the way <laughs> i'm, I'm Unfortunately, learning that the big file of that, I must have destructively edited because all I have is this is this one, and I'm sad about that. But okay, here's a cat. Here's a bunch of cats delayed by half a second. And it's a doing a ping pong thing as well. Um, yeah, because we're delaying Only, the left channel. Uh, not okay, the right. okay. So it's not a full ping pong, it's a ping delay, basically. <laughs> um, by the way, um, I, I just I just remembered this and I gotta pitch this to you, uh Garrett. Um with with echo cycles, um, you know how you can you can kind of move these around. I was thinking if there was a parameter yeah. to move them this way so that you can get um, echoes that are like a bouncing um, ping pong ball, like ding, 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 ding. They get Ooh. closer to each other Ooh. in time, yeah. Or, or the opposite of that, they'll be like... Yeah. That, would be, that would be a cool thing to implement. Yeah, yeah. interesting. So, I mean, that, I think you do that with multi-tap. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually not done with multi-taps at all. Oh, it's done with uh, just like an or a single feedback delay, um, and the rotation is done with some. It uses three channels to do stereo delay, mm -hmm. which is how you get that rotation, um, which yeah. is quite fun. But um, yeah, that's an interesting one. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, that would be that mm. would be really nice. Um, yeah, this is the rotation that he's talking about for people in the chat. If you're wondering, um, this can also. I found a way to make this a lot bigger, but I, I can't recall. Um, but I digress. So yes, Garant, um, if you have to go, or if anybody else has to go, we can call it a day at any point. Um, but um, yeah, let me know. 
I think I might I might head off because I've got some uh, some stuff tomorrow, and it's I don't know what time it is over there, but it's nine fifteen mm-hmm. here, and I should. Uh, now that we got all the pre- preliminaries out of the way, how about our homework is to read the article and really make sense of the uh, how the delay lines will be used to make the diffuser and the reverb, nice. and then yeah. okay. then we actually implement the thing. Sure, next time. sounds good. Um, yeah, sounds cool. Garrett, you are welcome on this stream anytime. Um, I know you're busy, so I won't bug you every week or anything. But at any time you want to come on, um, just let us know. You have my email. Um, and yes, that sounds like a good um, homework idea, Leandro. Um, and for everybody in the chat, I'll, I'll put the link there. Though, though you can go to signalsmith.co.uk. The link is down there. And then you can find the blog section. Uh, sig- signalsmith dash audio. Oh. I couldn't get signalsmith.co.uk. Mm. It's some guy who installs uh, TV aerials, and he wouldn't oh, give me the damn. Um, <laughs> Do you watch? It's do you watch out. Silicon Valley, the TV show? This reminds me of that a little bit. Uh, um, interesting. Yeah, cool. So yeah, um, I have to come back to you know see where this goes and uh if we want to try and get the the diffuser working that'd be really cool um but yeah i think i'm gonna cool I'm gonna head off um, for tonight thanks for um being. this was great uh thanks for having me and i'll uh yeah um awesome yeah great it was great to, to meet, meet you. you thanks for coming um great to meet you in the chat i'm sure we'll say bye in a second but yeah thanks for coming and see you hopefully again on the stream all right bye. cheers Cheers. Um, so the rest of y'all, are y'all staying or are y'all going to, should we? I'll go and go right left. Yes. Yeah, yeah, cool. let's wrap it up. Um, all right, so everybody oh. um, else, rock and roll and keep on rocking in the free world. And... Uh, Leandro? Yeah? Uh, is it hard, how hard is, is it to make a library? Is it difficult to make a library? Yeah. What do um, you need to do? Do you write the functions or do you, is it a text? Uh, so essentially the, the birth of a library is what we did with the EQ when we extracted a filter into a function. So okay. that's the, the core of it. And then all you have to do is take that function definition, put it in a separate file, and yeah. in that separate file, you only have the init block. You will not have all the other blocks of code, like the sample block. Okay. Uh, you just have the init block, and you call that file whatever dot effects dash ink. Yeah. In fact, that extension can be anything, but by convention, so, it is uh, JS effects yeah. ink, uh, dash ink, and there you go. That's your library. All right. So I'm thinking like HTML, CSS uh, documents. So it, it reads through the HTML, and then reads through the CSS code and then sort of renders the in the browser, right? Sorry. Kind of like that. I I'm I'm not following. Are we talking about libraries in JS effects? Yes, yes, exactly. But I, my my reference would be um in HTML and CSS. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can think of it like that. Uh in fact if you know CSS, uh you can think of this as having like a CSS file, and then in another one, you can mm-hmm. say add import, and that's yeah. your library, sort of. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's and similar. it's in the init block yes. with the function. All right. Um, cool. Yes. Um, very cool. And I think, Leandra, at one point in these streams, we will um, we, we will probably write a library at some point. Um, so So I'm sure this will come up. Are we still live? We, we are still live. Yes. Yeah. Um, we we can right. wrap it up like um, like in a second there. Sure. Um, yes. And Leandro, um, by the way, we the the EQ thing. There's there's some issues with it. Um, that is that is interesting. So like like I thought maybe I I honestly thought maybe Garant would only stay an hour or so. We thank him for staying as long as he did. That's very nice of him. Um, but I thought, yeah, we will definitely have time for me to show you because some weird stuff is happening. Um, oh, okay. But how about we leave yes, it for we'll next time? Yes, we'll leave that for next time. Um, 
Pablo is asking one last question, which is, is there a way to change the UI of, let's say, JS saturation? Yes, it's absolutely possible. You can take any... Um, you can take any piece of JS plugin and first of all, you can edit it or you can just copy all the code and then paste it and duplicate it to, to another thing that is your own. In terms of legality, nobody cares, but in terms of like, you should you know, give props to effects if you're reusing them. But um, yeah, I can, I can copy all I this think, code. Uh Kenny Gioia has a tutorial on how to um, do that. On how to what add an inter add a UI? No, not an add an UI. Sorry, no. But, but copy an effect and create yeah. a new so uh, you JS call this effect. JS uh, saturation with UI, and you get a new thing, and you can select all this code and you can paste it, and now you have a copy of the same thing. Um, and you can totally give it a UI with with Garen's UI libraries, which um, I can show you this thing as well. Let me undock it, or let me actually float it. Yeah, um, this is a really nice plugin, but it's like in a way trying to teach you um, the UI. So you go introduction, and you have these modules you can work through um, and make a UI for anything. Um, which I highly recommend to everybody. I've kind of gotten until I've gotten like somewhat of the way through the basics. Um, still a long way to go, but yes, this is the way I would recommend. Leandra, any recommendations for UI research development kind of deal? Well, to tell you the truth, uh, the JS effects facilities for graphical user interfaces is very bare bones. You have to write a lot of code. So either you use a library like this, but if you really want to understand how to do graphical user interfaces from scratch, uh, it pretty much boils down to you can draw rectangles, you can draw text, you can, uh, when the user clicks, you can find the coordinates of the cursor and then you can see all the buttons you have rendered on the screen and you can try to detect collision. So it's very low level and there is not a lot of material on how to learn and do these things. The only recommendation I actually do have is to go watch my, uh, uh, my code review on the Automixer, because I do have a little bit of UI. It's not as sophisticated. I don't have knobs. I don't have anything interactive, but I, I needed a graphical user interface to show you some outputs, to show you the meters going up and down and whatnot. And then in the code review, I explain how all that works, which may be a good primer for the low level facilities that you actually have. And then from there, you can either use a library like uh, we looked at, or you can yeah, just continue from there. But let me tell you, doing anything as fancy as re-EQ, not re-EQ, but re-EQ, doing something as fancy as that is going to be a lot of work. Has anyone checked the LBX stripper? Uh, I just saw it in the forums, um, but no, I have not checked it out. All right, because I also saw it in the forums and and haven't checked it. But is is it is is the paid version or is it? Because you can load a lot of different plugins with that LBS. It uses the um. Uh, it kind of de deconstructs some uh, different plugins. So and 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 pastes another UI over it, so you can uh, have the LBX stripper use uh, Fab filters plugins, etc. Interesting. So wait, so it it strips the UI and just gives you the controls. Oh, but we already yeah. have that um, don't we in Reaper by doing um, this. Um, let me show you. Um, I can R. Press yeah. the UI button like this, or does it do something beyond that? Yeah, it does something beyond it, but I think it uses that thingy where it just sort of sorts ever breaks it down to uh sl sliders and, and names and then adds another UI on top of that. So I, I think that that's what it does. But that's also another way of getting a UI for something for a JSSM. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, cool. Uh, Pablo says that he found this channel some days ago and it's really good. Oh, for a second, I thought you're like, I found this channel. Check it out. But you're saying this channel. If if that is what you're saying, thank you. Um, and yes, um, otherwise, I think um, adios time and tomorrow, same time. So 1.30 EST, which is 5.30 p.m. GMT slash UTC. And it's, it is also 10.30 a.m. Pacific time. You can join us on Leandro's channel. And we're going to do audio production things. So. Yes, I bought an ocarina. So we're going to record cool. an ocarina. And you bought a bass. <laughs> so sounds really fun. Um, sounds like a lot of fun things yeah. with that project. And there's a few things I want to test. I learned a few things that I really want to test with your project, using it as a guinea pig. Um, so yeah, maybe tomorrow, maybe we'll, we'll go linearly though. They're all like mixing based, but, um, yeah, um, cool, cool. Um, yes. Um, otherwise everybody in the chat, thanks for watching. Thanks for being with us. Uh, thanks again to Garant and we'll check in on you later. Thank you. Chill with 19. Um, that's great to hear. Yes. Um, rock and roll. Keep on keeping on. I never know how to actually end the 